Well, today we're going to discuss a few things. We're going to discuss a topic that I entitled, They Tried to Erase Us. They Tried to Erase Us from History, from Everything. And we're going to open up with Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. Who's reading for me? Soldier Kushaya, sir. Soldier Kushai? Kushaya. Kushaya. Yes, okay, sir. Soldier Kushaya. All right. So y'all, are, oh, shalom brothers and sisters online. I apologize. We get messages. Y'all always forget us. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy 32, and let's open up with verse, mm, let me look at it. Ah, this is Moses speaking to us in the wilderness, and the Most High is telling Moses to give us a song. All right. And in this song, he says a few things. Look at verse, do me a favor. Uh, let me look at it. I don't want that verse. I want to get to the point. Give me verse 20. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and verse 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will hide my face from them. This is the Israelites. If we break God's commandments, this is what the Lord told Moses to tell us. He will hide his face from us. Go ahead. I will see what their end shall be. Then he says, and then I'm going to see what the Israelites' end shall be. Go ahead. For they are a very forward generation. To be forward means to be disobedient. This is a disobedient generation. Go ahead. That's why he had to kill that whole first generation off. He only saved Caleb and uh, Joshua and the kids. Good. Children in whom is no faith. He said, this group has no faith. Come on. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. Why? Because we started worshiping idols. Good. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. We provoked them to anger with our vanities, our lies. Good. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. Mm -hmm. Now that right there is a heavy proverb right there. A lot of people don't know what that's talking about. Let me see. Let me see who I want to. Let me see. Anybody know who that is? Who that's talking about? Any of you brothers know who that's talking about? I'll move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. Anybody know? Brother, I hear you. Come to the mic. Give me your name. Not you. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Uh, Wait, so pull the mic up. So look all crazy. Test, test. Yeah, Soldier well, Kadash. Who are you? Who, who? Soldier Kadash. Kadash. Okay, yes, Kadash. Go ahead. Uh, this is talking about the Northern Kingdom. Very good. All praises to the Lord. Y'all write that down. Northern Kingdom. Give me that precept. You know what I want? First Peter 2 and 10. He went to he went to Genesis. First Peter two and ten. Read that for me real quick. And then we're gonna come right on back. Yes, sir. The book of First Peter's chapter two and verse ten, mm-hmm. which in past time were not a people. Which in past time were not a people. Go ahead. But are now the people of God. But are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy. They didn't re- obtain mercy. But now have obtained mercy. In Christ. Go ahead. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Where's the one right there? Look right there, because I'm not looking at it. Where it says, you're going to be a nation of priests, kings. It's right there somewhere. Two and nine. Read nine. Verse nine. Should have started there. Read nine and ten together. Yes, sir. Verse nine. But ye are a chosen generation, Mm -hmm. a royal priesthood, and holy nation. A peculiar people. That goes back to Exodus. Uh, Exodus 19 says that, and Deuteronomy says that about the Israelites. That was never said about the Edomites or the Philistines or the Moabites. Read. That ye should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness. Come on. Into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people. So it's telling you there's a group of Israelites that was not a people. That's northern kingdom. Go ahead. But are now the people of God. But are now the people of God. Because Christ died for them and brought them in back into this truth. Was that it? No, sir. Go ahead. Which had not obtained mercy, mm-hmm. but now have obtained mercy. All right. Go back to Deuteronomy now. Deuteronomy 32, and you were at, read 21 again. Yes, sir. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy. With that which is not God, they have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I and I will move them 
to jealousy with those which are not a people. Right, because when Northern Kingdom came in, Judah was pissed off. The scribes, the Pharisees, everybody was mad. These dudes are idolaters. How the, how the hell the Lord bring them back? Didn't Hosea and them say they're outcasts? They're gone? Christ brought them all back. Go ahead. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Read. For a fire is killed, kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with, the, with her increase. Read faster for me. And set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them. Mm -hmm. I will heap mischiefs upon the Israelites. Go ahead. I will spend mine arrows upon them. Mm -hmm. They shall be burnt with hunger. The Israelites shall be burnt with hunger. And devoured with burning heat. Devoured with burning heat. And with bitter destruction. Bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them. That, if for that part right there, somebody asked me, what is that talking about? Like, if y'all looked during the time of slavery, there was something called gator bait. Mm. That's wild beasts, okay? You saw that in Numbers 29 with the serpents. You also saw that during the time of, what was it, Domitian, when they threw us into the Roman Colosseums? They had wild beasts tearing us up. You see that in Django when they let the dogs out on us. That's what that's talking about. Go ahead. With the poison of serpents of the dust. Read. The sword without and terror within. So the sword without, meaning we were warring with other nations. Then it says, and terror within. We had internal fighting amongst ourselves. Go ahead. Shall destroy both the young man and the virgin. The suckling also with the man of gray hairs. Read. I said, I would scatter them into corners. The corners is the four corners of the earth. I'm going to scatter you Israelites to the four corners. Go ahead. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. And nobody's going to remember that you're the Israelites. That's what the Lord said to us as a judgment for breaking God's laws. Read. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy? But then he comes back. He says, were it not that I feared the wrath of these other nations? Go ahead. He's going to tell you what he's talking about. Go ahead. Lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely. For example, lest the white man should say what? Read. And lest they should say our hand is high. Our hand is high. Go ahead. And the Lord have not done all and, this. And the Lord ain't the one that did this. We did this of our own volition. We did this. Because the white man set himself up as God. He said, we did this. The Lord had no intervention in this thing. So that's what Moses prophesied to us way back then. And we didn't believe him. Make the remembrance of us to cease from among men. The adversary. Hey, give me that precept in, uh, it might be Zechariah. I, I see a one in 15 in my head. Zechariah 5. Zechariah 1, it said they help forward the affliction. That's what I want. Find me that. That ain't in my notes, but it just popped in my head. You know what I'm talking about? It's in Zechariah. Chapter 1, verse 15. Thank you. The book of Zechariah, chapter 1 and verse 15. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. So God is displeased with the nations that are at ease. Why? Because they conquered us. They got wealth, fame, and fortune. Go ahead. For I was but a little displeased. He was but a little displeased at us. Go ahead. And they helped forward the affliction. They helped forward the affliction of the Israelites. That goes back to what we just read in Deuteronomy. Where it said, uh, the Lord hath not done this. We, we the ones that did this thing. We destroyed the Israelites. God had no hand in this. You know the Lord had his hand in our destruction. Because he took our strength, our power, our understanding from us. Okay. So from there, give me 1 Kings 12, 15. The book of first Kings chapter 12 and verse 15, wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people for the cause was from the Lord that he might perform his saying, uh -huh. which the Lord spake by Ahijah, the Shilonite unto Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king saying, what portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse to your tents. Oh, Israel. Now. So that was the split of Israel. That's the split. When Rehoboam listened to the counsel of the young men and not the counselors of Solomon, his father, who had age and experience, he listened with the young dudes who just came out their mama's backside. And it caused the kingdom to be split. But that was God's program. Read that last that verse you just read again. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, talking about Rehoboam, mm -hmm. the people answered the king saying, 
What portion have we in David? What do we have to do with King David? Go ahead. Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. We don't have an inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Mm -hmm. Now see to thine own house, David. So now they said, Northern Kingdom said, that see to your own house, David. See to your own house. Go ahead. So Israel departed unto their tents. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Mm -hmm. the so king, you had some northern kingdom that was still among us. Go ahead. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram. What verse are you at? Verse 18, sir. Go ahead. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram. No, let me see. Yeah, yeah, we're going down to 20. Who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stones. Damn, see that? They stoned him. Northern kingdom said, we, we can't stand you. Go ahead. And all Israel stoned him with stones that he died. Therefore, King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. What verse are you at now? Verse 19, sir. Go ahead. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. So northern kingdom rebelled against the house of David unto this day. Read. And it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation. And made him king over all Israel. They made Jeroboam, this wicked dude, Jeroboam, king over all Israel, northern kingdom. Go ahead. There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. There was none that followed David, but the house of Judah only. Read the next verse. Verse 21. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin. Because Benjamin was with us too. Go ahead. And hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men, which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. So now real quick, let's jump to Second Chronicles chapter 11. I'm just dealing with the split right now. I'm not dealing with, y'all can read the history on your own. Second Chronicles chapter 11, and let's start at verse 13. So, so far you got Judah and Benjamin. That's what you got. Go ahead. The book of Second Chronicles chapter 11, verse 13. And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him out of all their coasts. Start at verse, let me see. Hmm, start at 12. Verse 12. And in every several city he put shields and spears and made them exceeding strong, having Judah and Benjamin on his side. Right, so those were the two tribes that were together. Go ahead. And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him out of all their coasts. So you had the Levites leave out of all their coasts. Go ahead. That were amongst the northern kingdom. Go ahead. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. So northern kingdom didn't want the Levites among them. Why? Because when you read the history, it says the northern uh, Levites would bring us back to keep these high holy days. Bring us back to Jerusalem. That means bring us back to Judah. We don't want to go back there. So they said, all you Levites get the hell out of our coast. So they were all cast out. All had to go back to Judah. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Bishop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> Where verse you at? Verse 15, sir. Mm -hmm. And he ordained him priests for the high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. So see what North Jeroboam did? They set up priests at the lowest set of people, and they worship idols. They worship devils. Go ahead. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Everybody that sought the one true God, they went to Jerusalem. Go ahead. What verse to, you at? Verse 16. Go ahead. To sacrifice unto the Lord God of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah, and made Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, strong. Three years, for three years, they walked in the way of David and Solomon. Mm, so now, give me Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. So the kingdom was split. I just wanted to touch on that. The king, we heard the prophecy of what the Lord said was going to happen. Then we see the kingdom split. Now we're in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 17. The book of Matthew chapter 1, verse 17. Mm. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. One more again. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. 
And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. All right, who can answer me? What happened in these 14 generations from David to Babylon? That's all I want. From the time of King David to Babylon, what happened? Brief. I want a brief answer. Who knows? Raise your hand if you got a clue. Nobody has a clue here. All right, come up to the mic. Come on. All I want is what happened from David to Babylon. I want a brief answer. Shalom. Who are you? Give me your name. Brother Michael. Brother Michael. So what happened? We was in captivity. All right, have a seat. Next, come on you. And during David's time, we were not in captivity. I want to answer. What happened from David to Babylon? Shalom, Bishop. Shalom. Um, well, who are you? Brother Aaron. Brother Aaron. Come on now. Um, Northern Kingdom uh, was on the other side. Went, went to the other side. Went to, what are you talking about? Wales? Earth. Ireland? What are you nah, talking when about? They came to when they came to the Americas. Okay, have a seat. Wrong. All right, you. I thought y'all training these young men. Oh, they're new? All right, all right. Shalom, Bishop. Most high Christ bless, Brother Aaron. Brother Northern Aaron. So what happened from David to Babylon? That's all I want. Northern kingdom went into captivity under Assyria. That's correct. A little pride. They started bugging out, setting up idols. Okay. We just read something that nobody's mentioning. Yeah, this is. We just read. We sat here for 20 minutes and read it, and nobody mentioned it. Do you yeah. notice that? They forget their thoughts already, man. They, they yeah. got... What happened? Go. What happened? I don't got it, Bishop. Sorry. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm just going to give you the answer. Israel was split into two kingdoms. We just read it. Oh, God, help me. Israel was split into two kingdoms. Yes, the brother was correct. Then northern kingdom went into the Assyrian captivity. Then after the northern kingdom went to the Assyrian captivity, we all went into Babylon, the Babylonian captivity. So read it again. Matthew 1, verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. So from David to Babylon, the kingdom was split into two. Northern kingdom went into the Assyrian captivity. And then all of us went into the Babylonian captivity. Write that down. That's what happened. We don't know. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ. Are 14 generations. All right. What happened from Babylon to Christ? From Babylon to Christ. Anybody know? From Babylon to Christ. From the time of Nebuchadnezzar, which ruled Babylon, unto Christ, what happened? Brief. I just want a brief answer. Nobody knows. Nobody has a clue. Nobody. Oh, you got a clue? Okay. Let's see. Let's see if you got it. Shalom, family. Brother Johannan. Brother Johannan? Correct. Okay. At that point, we were going into captivity, from captivity to captivity. Like what? Assyrian captivity. We just, we've read that. Already. Persian and Mede captivity. Okay. Then the, we went to the uh, Greek captivity. Okay. And now at this point, we're entering into the Roman captivity. Very good. Very good. So from, uh, what was it? From Babylon to Christ was the Persian captivity. Write that down. Greek captivity. And by the time this is going, being written, it's regarding Rome, the Roman captivity. We were under Roman domination. They didn't destroy us yet, but we were under Roman dominion. Now, why is that important today? Jump down to verse 21 of this same chapter. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. What shall he do? Shall call his name Jesus. Come on, read. For he shall save his people from their sins. For he shall save his people from their sins. Our sins is what caused northern kingdom to be split. Our sins is what caused us to go into the Babylonian captivity, Persian Mede captivity, Greek captivity, Roman captivity. Our sins caused all of that. So now a savior has come in the midst of our captivity. A lot of people, they read... They, Churches will say, well, let's start at verse 18. Now, now the birth of Jesus Christ, was, they don't want verse 17 about the captivities, and they definitely don't want verse 1, his genealogy of his fathers. They don't want that. They have been instructed to ignore verse 1 through 17. But as teachers, we got to make them go back. We're going to go to verse 17, then we're going to start at verse 1. What the hell are you talking about? 
so they can push their lying narrative. Jesus didn't have no daddy, and he saved everybody from their sin. No, stop, stop. You're going off subject because it's talking about Israel going into captivity right here. All right? From there, from there, give me the images of the Varney. Pay attention. Canada, come on. I want the images of the Varney. Right there, I want that one. You just, right there, that's what I want. Right there. All right. So, this was a part of us. This is during the Middle Ages. All right. Many of y'all know this. All of you that have been with us for some time, y'all, y'all know this is called the Church of the Varne, built by Stephen the Great, um, in Romania. I had an original Romanian copy. It was stolen. That's why I don't lend my books out no more. Uh, no, 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 no. People steal. So on the side of this church, there are images of the saints, of the Israelites. Give me the next one. Okay, here's a picture of Christ. Look at that power emanating from him. We always knew Christ, the angels, the apostles were black. We always knew that. Okay, but then remember what we read in Deuteronomy. The Lord said, I'll make the remembrance of you cease from among men. We knew a little bit here, but remember during this time period, during the dark ages, we were not righteous people. We were not righteous. When you read, see movies like Braveheart, that was us, but we was wicked as hell. Uh, what's that dude? The, the, he steal from the rich, give to the poor, Robin Hood, all of that. Them was real people, but we was wicked. The, the sheriff of Nottingham and all that, doing all that wicked taxation, having you get married, some, the, the king got to have sex with your wife first. That was us. All that wickedness was worshiping of idols. That was us. Okay, give me the next one. That's what makes me, I hear some Israelites say we ruled with Christ for a thousand years during the dark ages. I'm like, no, we did not. No, we was wicked as hell. Worshiping idols, committing fornication and adultery and murdering. Now we ruling with Christ for a thousand years during that time. That thousand year reign is talking about future time to come. Here's another one. This is judgment day. This is what we understood, that the white man was going into slavery. Can you zoom in on the hand of God at the top? Top left, hand of God. That big black hand right there. Right there. We always knew there was no such thing as color don't matter. That didn't come up until slavery. Now you got dumb Negroes saying color doesn't. No, shut the hell up. We always knew that color mattered. Okay, raise it up. And look who's being judged. The white man. The white man. See those spirits around it? Remember what Legion? Remember when uh, Christ said, what is your name to the man? He said, my name is Legion. Have you come? I ain't going to quote it right. I'm going to paraphrase it. Have you come to torment us before our time? Meaning these evil spirits know they have a time appointed for judgment. These are spirits of adultery, spirits of lying, thieving. Some of you, not some. Everybody in here got spirits that roll with them like that. If you's a liar, you know one of them spirits is rolling with you. If you's an adulterer. Got to suck it. Got to do this. Got to do that. You know the spirit of adultery is there on you. There's a demon with you. That's why Paul was saying, that which I would do, I do not. But what I would do, now how does it go? You know I messed that up. Uh, what I don't want to do, that I do. Yeah, you was there. Why? Because there's spirits always in your head battling you. You, you drug addicts, you know what I'm talking about. The lust, the desire is just so strong. The demons. That's why Christ said, pray and fast, pray and fast. Let, hey, get to the chains, get to the chains, Kenna. They, We knew that race of people was going into captivity. We knew that thing. It was no confusion. And did that you see into the top? Huh? Say it on the mic. Uh, when you look to the top, you see their daddy Satan. That's when, when you read Revelation, it says um, the devil and Satan is talking about Esau and the spiritual demon that is born to him. That's, that's who the angel Michael is standing, on, standing up on right there. So we had, as wicked as we was back then, we had some understanding. Today we have lost it. Happy, we have lost it all. Is there another picture there? Let me see. Don't put it on the screen for everybody, but let me look. All right, give me the next one. Give me, give me the next picture. Uh, it's a book. No, it's a book with uh, uh, you see the in Spanish illumination, right there. Yes, Spanish illumination. Put that on there. 
This was in Spain. In Spain, we painted that. Remember, we was ruling in Spain from what, 7-Eleven until, uh, was it, 13-something or 14? 14. Around there. So we knew Christ is in the center right there. The angels all around, the cherubims on the left of Christ, the right of Christ, we knew they were always black. And we never said, color doesn't matter. That didn't enter our thoughts because that's stupid. Uh, give me the next one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me that. Let me see my orange writing because I can't see from here. Yeah, yeah, read that. Can you read that? Yes, sir. A little further on, the man, on in the manuscript, monstrous white men. What kind of white men? Monstrous white men. Hey, tell the apologetics we didn't write these books. Mm -hmm. Their white scholars put this stuff together, not us. Go ahead. Monstrous white men and blacks carrying curved sabers and an and and blazing. And blazing shield marched toward the Antichrist. Marched toward who? The Antichrist. Uh huh. And kings from all over the world worship him. Now, let me tell you something about that. Because we know in these last days, Antichrist is the entire Caucasian race and all that. But every major time period, when our forefathers read the scriptures, we used those scriptures to explain what we were going through at that time. Y'all understand that? Okay. So now, look at far right, top right. Top right. That's the monstrous white men leading the blacks to the Antichrist. Okay. On a goat, even. Okay. Give me the bottom one. Let me see the bottom one. Okay. Yep. Everybody's worshiping. Look who the Antichrist is. The white man. Look who it is. The white man. Pull it over. Let me see the left one, left side again. Okay. Right there. You got that. Right read it. That one right there. I want the... Bottom right. Bottom right. Yeah. When you read the book, it tells you the Antichrist and the false prophet. And they took the crown off the king of Libya's head and submitted to Antichrist. So during that, during the dark age, we knew the white man was the devil. We said, these people wicked as hell. Then, yeah. Then Bishop, you notice those are image, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you notice those are image. What's next, Canada? Anything next? Oh, uh, yeah, I like this one right here. Yeah. No, hey, how many of y'all saw Game of Thrones? When you see the movie, there's a group called the Wildlings. In this book, they call the white man, uh, wild men, thank you, wild men. They said the wild men, in the book it says the wild men attacked the castle to cast out the blacks. We was the ones in the castle, and the wild men was on the other side of the wall. With all, and they all, notice how they're, they're all hairy. Them Edomites is all hairy, and we the ones with clothes on. Fighting for our lives, fighting for our wives and children. But as we know, as history uh, has it go, we lost the battle. That was God's plan. All that was God's plan. He said, I'm going to raise this group up. They're going to overthrow you. Was there more Canada in the next picture? And we didn't, hey, tell the apologetics we didn't make this stuff up. They got videos out saying, we, we, we drew this stuff. We did this. Y'all stupid as hell. Okay. What's, was there another one? Mm. Uh, uh, nope, not yet. Give me Deuteronomy 32. 20, but hold that up. right. Here. Give me Deuteronomy 32, 26, 27. One more again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 26. I said, I will scatter them into corners. I said, I will scatter them into corners, four corners of the earth. Go ahead. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Now I'm reading this because I know sometimes we have a short attention span. So we're going to reread this again. Go ahead. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy. I'm talking about the other nations. Lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely. Lest the white man, for example, should behave himself strangely. Unless they should say, unless the white man should say, our hand is high. Our hand is high. We the highest nation on earth. Go ahead. And the Lord have not done all this. The Lord is not the one that did this. The Lord is not the one that allowed us to destroy the Israelites. We God. We the power on the earth. That was their mindset. Psalms 83 and 1, please.
The book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. So this is King David. Keep not thou silence, O God. Go ahead. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. Mm -hmm. For lo. No, I'm sorry. This is Asaph. This isn't David. This is Asaph. Go ahead. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. So God has enemies. A lot of people think God don't have enemies. He has enemies. People that hate him. Nations that hate him. Go ahead. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Lifted up the head as God. Lifted up their head as Christ. Lifted up their head as the angels. Lifted up the head as the world dominating, the world superpower. That's what that means. Go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Crafty counsel, number one, write this down. Slavery is crafty counsel. Religion is crafty counsel. Politics is crafty counsel. The educational system is crafty counsel. Psychology is crafty counsel. All of those things that I just named teach us that we are not the Israelites. All of those things that I just named takes us away from the one true God. Everybody understand that? Yes, Read that again. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. We are the hidden ones. Who we are has been hidden in the earth. We are the hidden ones. Go ahead. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. See that? Come, let us cut them off from being a nation. Go ahead. That the name of this is why we all you people said that didn't happen. Then why when we came we all came on slave ships, but then we're divided. One group is called West Indian, next group African American, one group Haitian, one group Brazilian. All of that, that's a part of division. They've divided us from being a nation. Read again. They have said, "Come, let us cut them off from being a nation." Then you got the group that was here prior to us. When we got here among them, they caused division among us. Read. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That's what God prophesied. Remember he said in Deuteronomy 32, I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. So now the nations have gathered themselves together and they are fulfilling God's plan. Okay? That the name of Israel would be no more in remembrance. So God's hand is behind this. Read. For they have consulted together with one consent. So all the nations, that's why you got that United Nations building. All nations agree as one regarding us, our people. Keep that race down. Keep them down. Don't ever let them rise up again. Read. They are confederate against thee. Read. Confederate against God. The tabernacles of Edom. Now God gives his hit list of enemies. Edom is the number one nation. Edom is the biblical name for the so-called Caucasian race. That's their name. Go ahead. And the Ishmaelites. That's the name of the Arabs. Go ahead. Of Moab. That's the Chinese. Go ahead. And the Hagarenes. The Hagarenes are Egyptians. And when I say Egyptians, I'm referring to the Nilotes. Egyptians. I'm going to explain that a little later on. Go ahead. Gabal. Gabal. That's Amite, Hamites again. Mm -hmm. And Ammon. Ammon. That's the Japanese. And Amalek. Amalek. That's the so-called white man in Israel today. Go ahead. The Philistines. With the inhabitants of Tyre. Those are African Nilotes, Hamites. Go ahead. Assur also is joined with them. Right. The Syrians are joined with them. Go ahead. They have hope in the children of Lot. They have helped Moab and Ammon. Go ahead. Selah. Go ahead. So now from there, from there, from there. That's all I want. Watch this. Give me. What verse was that? That was the end of verse 8, sir. That was the end of verse 8. So now give me Luke 21, 20. Many of our people during the time of Rome, we fled deeper, listen to my wording, deeper into Africa. And the way I say deep, many times I'll, I'll slip of the tongue and I'll say we fled into Africa, but that's not necessarily correct. Because Israel was in the land of Ham. Remember the name of Israel was called what? Canaan. Canaan. That was in the land of Ham, but that was our land. So I'll say it like we fled deeper into the land of Ham. Give me that in Luke 21, please. In 20. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So Christ said, when you see Jerusalem come past by the Roman armies, know that destruction is near. Go ahead. 
Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. You know what's funny? You get these Christians that say they're going to disapprove Rudolph R. Winslow's books about Israel going into uh, Africa. We're reading it right. Christ said this. He didn't, Rudolph, Brother Rudolph R. Winslow did not make that up on his own. He got it from the Bible, from the biblical text. These apologetics, they hate the Bible. What verse you at? Verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. The mountains is Africa. Somebody might be trying to be clever and say, how do you know that's Africa? Matthew 2.13, real quick, please. We're coming right back. The book of Matthew, chapter 2 and verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. Flee into Egypt. Egypt is in Africa, in case anybody don't know. Egypt is in Africa. Okay? So it's say, and, and listen, during that time, there was nothing called the Suez Canal. Nothing called that. That was made up, that was created in the 1800s. Then once they created the Suez Canal, they said, let's call this part of land on the other side, the Middle East. That's what everybody go, oh yeah, Christ is from the Middle East. Nah, that's all conspiracy. It's all deceit. It's all lies. Let's go back. Luke 21, please. The book of Luke, chapter 21, and verse 20. Verse 21. And let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Now, I'm not saying none of us didn't flee to, for example, Saudi Arabia or other places where we're at, but I'm stressing Africa for a reason, the deeper parts for a reason. Go ahead. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Why does it say in the countries? Because some of us were already in Egypt. Some of us were in Saudi Arabia. For example, for example, say, how do you know we were in other countries? Well, let me see who's smart, who's thinking, not who's smart. Who's thinking? How do we know? I'm going to help you. I'm going to help y'all because I know some of y'all knew. How do we know there were Jews dwelling in other nations? See, I gave the answer. <laughs> Anybody know? Ain't no hands going up. All right. In the back. Yeah. yeah, you. Come on up to the mic. Let me see. You better get it right. I get, didn't I get an answer away? Yeah, you gave it I gave it away. Shalom, Bishop. Shalom. And leadership. Most high Christ bless. Um, in well, Acts, who the, are you? Um, my name is Brother Sadek, sir. Brother Sadak? Brother Sadek. Sadek. Yes, sir. Okay. So in that book of Acts, in um, chapter 2, it says that there were Jews, um, devout men dwelling in all nations. Very good. Very good. Very good. All praises. All praises. Very good. So, so now, back to you. Read that verse again. Yes, sir. Verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Some were in Saudi Arabia, some were in Rome, some was in Crete, some was in Babylon. You read that in Acts too. We was all over the place. Go ahead. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Christ is letting them know everything that Moses prophesied would happen and the prophets is going to happen to y'all. He said, I'm not changing nothing the prophet said would happen. You know, people get bugged out. They're like, well, why didn't Christ stop it? Because that wasn't God's plan. The most I said, all these things have to happen first before you can get the kingdom. I didn't lie. I told you what was going to happen. You didn't listen. You're hard headed. So that's what happened. Come on. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Mm -hmm. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Because Rome was going to destroy us. Read. It's going to say that too. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The Israelites fell by the edge of Rome's sword. Go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. We were made slaves in all nations. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem was taken over by the other nations, the white man. Go ahead. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, what happened to the Israelites that fled into Africa? We're going to talk about that in a moment. Give me Judges chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Pay close attention here. What happened to that group that fled into Africa? Well, let's go back to Judges first and see what happened when we were amongst the other nations. The book of Judges, chapter 3 and verse 5. Pay attention. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the Hittites, and Amorites. These are Nilotes. Listen good. These are Nilotes. And when I say Nilotes, I'm talking about Hamites. The, the, the 
term today, instead of using a biblical term, they call them nilotes. Them those pure breed Hamites. Go ahead. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hittites, and Amorites, and Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites. And they took their daughters to be their wives. Ah, uh, you see what we started to do? We took their daughters to be our wives. Go ahead. And gave their daughters to their sons. And we started giving our daughters to their sons. What verse is that? Verse 6. You finished it? No, sir. Go ahead. And serve their gods. Yeah, then see that? We started serving their gods. Now watch this. Psalms 106, verse 35. So we started to assimilate amongst the Hamitic nations, the Hamitic tribes. Right. Yeah, especially Levi. Yeah, you're right about that. No, I'm joking with y'all. <laughs> Psalms 106, verse 35. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 35. Mm -hmm. But were mingled among the heathen. See that? What we said? We, saw, we were mingled among the heathen. And learn their works. And we learn their works. This is why there's a lot of confusion. People say, well, the people that came on the boat, they was worshiping. Uh, they were Muslim. Some were Christian. Some was worshiping rocks. Yeah, because when we was amongst the Dahomey, the Zulus, the Mandingo, we learned all that stuff. We spoke their dialect. We spoke their language. And it wasn't just for a few years. We were there, I'd say, at least over a thousand years. Okay, and we picked up everything they taught us. But guess what? They always knew who was their people and who was not. I'm going to say it again. They always knew amongst them tribes who was their people and who was not. Mm. From there, give me Hosea 7. So now back to Hamites, back to Hamites. You got the Nilotes, and amongst them you also have Cush, which are the Ethiopians. Okay, you have Hamitic Cushites. Then the Shemites, they call Bantu tribes today. They call them Bantus. I'm not dealing with the language. I'm just dealing with the ones they call Bantu. Those are generally the Shemites, the Shemitic ones. And the Shemites dwarfed all the other tribes in Africa today. We're the most numerous ones there. But guess what? Um, while we're there, we learn all those wicked customs that they got over there. We speak the language. We put the scars on our face. Me and uh, Deacon Isaac, when we was in, uh, was it? It was in Uganda. Bishop Kenai was there. I think it's on video, if I'm not mistaken. Remember, when we first got there, we were teaching on the street. There was a group of Nilotes, and we, we literally screamed. We all shoot! Their f I'm sorry if anybody here real ugly, but their faces was not like, the f something with the features was totally different. I'm like, whoa, 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 what's the hell wrong with them? What the hell Samson see? I don't think Samson saw them as good looking. Because Samson was in love with them Hamites, but they, I guess it was like them uh, Cushites, them little good looking ones. So then we met Anila. Remember the sister? She was black, like she was black, black, black. Yeah. Blacker than me, blacker than Lava. No, yeah, blacker than Lava. Uh, come on, Bishop. Black. Come I mean, she was so dark, her hair blended in with her skin. But when, when me and Isaac looked, she had real pretty features. We were like, what the hell? We said, she black. It was so unusual. We were like, whoa, she black. But then she, when we looked, she, but she mad pretty. And she was like an hourglass. Bam, bam, bam. Sorry, hon. But she was like that. <laughs> so I said, let's go over here and see what's up. We, we go over to talk to her. And she said, she said, I'm mixed. She said, my mother is Nilo. My father is Bantu. Mm -hmm. So we were like, oh. Mm. <laughs> Woo. I'll leave that alone then. You know, you're well I'm mad now, right? Your wife is watching too mad. But that we what that was the only ones that uh 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 mix Northern Kingdom had a history of doing the same thing. Hosea chapter seven, verse eight. The book of Hosea, chapter seven and verse eight. Ephraim. He have mixed himself among the people. And when it says Ephraim, yes, I'll talk about uh, the tribe Ephraim, but it's going into the entire northern kingdom. We're going to show you that later on. Go ahead. And from the time of Assyria, they were doing that. Go ahead. Ephraim, he have mixed himself among the people. Mm -hmm. Ephraim is a cake, not turned. Right, that's why some are dark, some are light. Now, people get mad with that and say, that ain't the breakdown. That is the breakdown. Give me the precept in 1 Ezra 870. 1 Ezra 870. The 
The book of first because, Ezra. Listen, uh, Southern Kingdom did a lot of mixing amongst the Ham Hamitic tribes. Northern Kingdom did mixing amongst Assyria and uh, Esau today. Go ahead. The book of first Ezra, chapter 8 and verse 70. For both they and their sons have married with their daughters. And the holy seed is mixed with the strange people of the land. And the holy seed is mixed. See that? Mixed. Now go back to Hosea. Hosea chapter 7 verse 8. Ephraim, he have mixed himself among the people. Mm -hmm. Ephraim is a cake not turned. He's a cake not turned. Yeah, it's going into sin, but it's also going to how they look. They're like a cake not turned. Very, some of them very light. They could pass for Esau. Some is very dark. They could pass for Laba. You know? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Strangers have devoured his strength. Strangers. For example, Spain has taken their strength from them. Go ahead. And he knoweth it not. And Ephraim don't realize that it was the Spaniards that took their strength. Go ahead. They don't know their history. Watch this. Yea, gray hairs are here and there. Ephraim, northern kingdom will grow old and not realize their history. Go ahead. Gray hairs are here and there upon him. Yet he knoweth not. Yet he knoweth not. We be trying to talk to some of them about their history. They're like, what? That never happened. No, Columbus. When we saw him, we said, hey, como esta? That's a lie. You didn't say no damn como esta. He didn't speak no damn Spanish. How old are you? I am 55. I am six. You stupid as hell. Just sit down and listen. <laughs> Give me Joel chapter 3 and verse 1. The book of Joel chapter 3 and verse 1. For behold, in those days and in the time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Meaning bring us back to the land. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat means decision, valley of decision. This hasn't happened yet. Go ahead. And will plead with them there for my people. He's going to plead with the nations there for God, for his people. And for my heritage, Israel. God's people are the Israelites, nobody else. Go ahead. Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Whom they have scattered amongst the nations. Hey, Canada, can you put up uh, Israel and pa Palestine map, please? So we were scattered amongst the nations like the Lord prophesied in Deuteronomy 32 that we read today. Okay, I was scattered them into corners. That's what we read today. And there's many other priests. I'm just using that one because that's the one we read today in class. Okay, so the prophecy has been fulfilled, that part. Okay, you got that for us? Huh? No, no, that's no, no, no. I want you to go on Google. Go on Google. Go on Google. And find me the map of Israel and Palestine. You know, sometimes just go off the off the dome. It ain't in my notes or nothing. Spirit just said, go to that. Come on. Okay. Uh, let me look. Mm. Okay. Uh, that one right there, the big one that you got there is fine. It's fine. I like that. So you see the land of Israel. In there, you got Gaza, which is run by, like, you see the, the map at the top. I'm not map, the code, the key code at the top. It says Palestine is the darker, what color is that? Orange. Tan or whatever. Orange. Then you got the darker one, brown, built up Palestinian area. So you see the West Bank over there is run by Palestine. Jerusalem's right there at the edge. Okay. So you got Gaza, you got the West Bank. And Jordan is also uh, Ishmael and them, all right? And the, the lighter one you got is Israel, all right? So that's, go back to Joel 3 now, what you just read. Joel 3, verse 2. Mm -hmm. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So once they scattered us, it's telling us that they parted the land. They took the land. Ishmael and Edom took the land. Okay? Ishmael took the land. Okay? Because then they were known as the Ottoman Turks. Okay? They took the land over. Then, at, then Esau came under Britain. They brought people from Poland, Czechoslovakia, Russia, uh, Germany. Uh, they put play, And they put them there in the land. There are other places too, Romania too. Read on. 
And they have cast lots for my people. They cast lots for God's people. That's us. That's bidding. They bid for us. And have given a boy for an harlot. Hey, give me that. Uh, I don't have it. I want you to put up a uh, type. Go to Google and put in uh, slave cell, sales. Uh, I want the images, though. I didn't send you that picture. Slave auction. Thank you. That's better. Slave auction. Slave auction. Very good. Put it on the screen. Yep, that's it right there. So read that part again. They and they cast have cast lots. lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot. And they cast lots for my people is what you're seeing. They cast lots for us. Hey, give me the one with the Gadites. There's one. I don't know. I, I don't see it. Put it on the screen so I can look at it. I don't know. As soon as I see it. There's one with Gadites being sold on the auction blocks. A lot of these dumb Negroes go, oh, they wasn't sold on auction block. They don't fit the curses. Raise it up. Come on, man. Yeah, the two women. Oh, right there. That's it right there. That's it right there. The two Gadite women being sold right there. And you got the black woman with her child sitting on the ground right there. So that's I don't listen to the comedic community. I don't listen to these dumb apologetics. I don't listen to these dumb Israelites. That say, no, the king, they didn't go into slavery. They don't fit. Shut the hell up. Don't, I don't listen to them because they don't know history at all. And you show them and they go, y'all made that up. Just shut up. So you had northern kingdom and southern kingdom being sold into slavery. So go back to Joel 3 and 3 again. And they have cast lots for my people. And when it says his people, it's talking about both kingdoms was sold, cast lots for. Read. And have given a boy for an harlot. They, meaning they made the boys breeders. They made the boys into breeders. You know, I heard a stupid Gino say, Gino Jenkins said, y'all got white blood in you. No, we all don't have white blood in us. You mean you got a slave plantation with 300 slaves, 300 now. Let's just cut it in half. Let's say there's a, let's now I'll just say a hundred. Let's say there's a hundred men, the rest of the women, right? hundred men, but you got three white men. The three white men is raping the women. You mean their sperm is just so powerful. It overpowered the 100 slaves that was, that was having sex with the women. What the hell is wrong with us? That's some powerful nigger tree right there. You can't. And that's the cast doubts to say, y'all not Israelites. You, you, you're all white. Shut the hell up. What is wrong with you? Who raised you? Come on. Where we at? Verse three. Go ahead. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yes, they sold a the girls for musket guns and wine. And it was raping them. That's what it means that they might drink. They partied with them. That's what that means. Read. <clears throat> Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Tyre and Zidon are Nilotic Hamites. Nilotic Hamites. Go ahead. And, and when I say night load, I'm talking about pure bread. And that's the confusion. They say black sold blacks. They don't realize in the continent of Africa, you have Bantus and Nilotes, Hamites and Shemites. They just say, oh, yeah, they're all the same over there. No. Go ahead. And all the coasts of You Palestine? know, when we was in Uganda, hey, who was with me? You, you was with me. Some of those East Indians was black as hell. If you didn't see their hair, you would have thought they was us. Black, black. The ones you see on TV be real light, though, but when you see them, they are black, black. Like the real Ishmaelites is black, black. That's why Ishmael's firstborn son was called Kedar, which means dark skin. What the hell is this? The movie on Netflix, uh, Triple R, it shows them. Right. That movie, because uh, Elon tends to have more of a sense of nationalism when it comes to their movies and their, um, they call it Bollywood. They, have, they, they pride themselves in, um, in their, their different features and so forth. Even though over there, because he saw one over there, is a lot of um, discrimination based upon color, but they are very, very dark over there. Y'all worry about color system here. A color, what do they call that? Colorism here. Yeah, caste. India is worse. Your caste system. The lighter you are, the more richer you are. And if you want me and Laba and you, we broke. We in the dirt. Well, <laughs> uh, Bishop, this is a caste system over there. Where um the the slaves those those Israelites that were scattered they were called the Dalits yes they like the lower yeah the lo or the cities they the like the lower caste in society they are servants yeah. and slaves that's the real dark ones that you see over there mm -hmm. you know so even from India a lot of our brothers and sisters gonna be coming Christ gonna be taking a lot of them from over there too that repent and guess what they don't they they don't look like me you understand. 
That's right. But they're going to change. Right, they're going to change. Everybody going to be changed in a twinkling of an eye. We're going to put yeah. in the image of Christ. Yep. I'm telling you. They're that's for, what the Bible say. What are you say? No, they're referred to as untouchables. Right. No one wants to, don't, don't come near them, don't deal with them. That's our people over there, too. Mm -hmm. What verse you at? Verse 4, sir. Go ahead. Yay. And what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Those are the Hamites. Go ahead. And all the coast of Palestine? That's Ishmael. That's the Arabs. Go ahead. This is the transatlantic slave trade with the Africans and the Arabs. Go ahead. Will ye render me a recompense? Will you render me a judgment, a payback? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? So the recompense they paid God back with was enslaving us. Selling us into slavery. God said, I'm going to do the same thing to you. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. That's what the Lord says. And we have nothing to say about it. Go ahead. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant These things. nations robbed us of everything. Go ahead. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. We were sold to the white man. When it says Jerusalem, it's including the other tribes that were amongst us too. Go ahead. That ye might remove them far from their border. So we were sold to the white man to be removed far from our border. Okay, and that's what happened. Give me the map now. Give me the map. The one I sent you. How did they know who to go get? What is maps? They had maps drawn up on who to go get. Okay. At the bottom code, it says Yemen Jews, Falasha. And the word Falasha means, um, help me out. Not false. Um, damn. It's like outcasts. Okay. Outcasts. So the Falashas, those are Israel. They, that name was put on them by the other Ethiopians. So you have Yemen Jews, you have Falashas, Berber, Moorish, and Negro Jews. Now, see the highlight? I got it circled for a reason. It says, uh, Beni Ephraim, meaning sons of Ephraim. You had some of the northern kingdom amongst us. That's what we read earlier. Okay, not all of the northern kingdom, but a remnant of, of them were with us in Africa. This was during the time from the um, around the 1500s, and they go back in time. Rick, go to the left. You see the Dahomey right there? Dahomey, that's the Dahomey Empire. That was us right there, too. Okay, we were amongst them. You got the Ashanti. We were amongst them, too. Because you got people say, well, the Ashanti was selling slaves. Yeah, the leaders of them were, some of them were Nilotes. And they said, oh, this one, this one, this one, sell them. That's not our people. Get rid of them. That's what happened. You got to uh, go up. You got Sierra Leone, Liberia. Uh, Y'all see the, you got, I want to see the words in red. You see Jewish kingdom of Ganta. I need you to circle it so people know where I'm reading that. On my left, my left, right there. Yep, right there. That's medieval Jewish kingdom. I can't read the word there under it, but. What is it? Kamnuri. Okay. You got Judeo paganism, meaning we mix uh, God's laws with, with idol, idolatry. That's in Senegambia. When you go up, go up to the left, going along the borders. Beni Musa, that, that's Hebrew for son of Moses. Okay. Uh, I can't, if you can see him, you know my eyesight is shot. You see Dagatons there? You see Dagaton, D A G G, that means scattered Israelites. I mean scattered. That's their even Edom East Esau's terminology. Black folks don't read, so you gotta look it up. Dagaton means scattered Jews. So Diaz, wherever you see the word Dagaton on this map, that's us there. Period. There's no one else. Dagaton's there in the middle. You see right there, you go over to your oh, is it? That's just right there. You have Jewish up there. Um, what else? You go down to the bottom, which says Sahara Desert. You see you see Dagaton's right there too. To the left, then to the bottom right, you see under desert, Dagaton right there also. Um, Dagaton to the bottom where you see all this, it says, uh, I can't read that word. Right there, hey, you're circling, perfect. Right there as well, that's all us. Timbuktu, my belong Timbuktu, the hell these guys talking about? Timbuktu, Israel's there also. Yep. It was the empire, we had a library there and they burned it to the ground. All right? Exactly. Hey. Hey, and this, this map right here that you all see, you all don't understand the kind of mission impossible oh, yeah. things we had to go through to get this. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. You know, like, you all don't understand the kind of, like, I remember when, when, when um, Captain Joel just ran across it, the spirit had him, you know, he, they, they literally had to turn the page for him. You all understand? You all don't understand the kind of mission impossible thing we had to go through to get these records. Mm -hmm. 
You understand? But the Most High is making it available for us today so we could pinpoint where our brothers is in Africa, on that side of the world. That's right. You know, because the Bible already tells us who Israel is on this side of the world. Yep. We waking up. But we need to go on that side of the world and wake up our people too. And the, author, okay? the author of this book is Godby. And he, he wrote, he was a professor at Duke hmm. University. We didn't write this up. We didn't make this map ourselves, you dummies. This is from Duke University. He was a professor there. And he had, and when he put this book together, he was told, do not entitle it as if it's a book of fact, but rather an, as a question because it will put his own academic um, career at jeopardy if he brought this out. So he didn't write it in a question. He called it Myths. Right. So he said, exactly. don't, don't make it, um, don't give a confirmation. Just say it's a myth. It's possible. But mm. this is all accurate here. Right, exactly. Hey, go back to uh, Benny Ephraim. I want y'all to see something. Zoom in where it says Nigeria, right above Benny Ephraim, around. Yep, y'all see what says Nigeria? And you got, it says Levite cities. You got two. That's in Nigeria. And you got the Hausa there. Because when we went there, you got the Yoruba don't like the, um, what's the name? The Ebos. And the Yoruba is Ephraim. Okay. So, you got them groups right there in Nigeria. I just saw something else too. Go, let me see. Pull back. Mm. Oh, go to Abyssinia. You're right there. Abyssinia is another name for Ethiopia. Notice it says Hebrew there, Yahwism, uh, Tabilatan Jews. That's Ethiopia right there. So they, we had our people right over there too. Okay. Then you got Arabia. Well, I don't want to talk about that one today. You got the Hebrews up there in Saudi Arabia. By they Nubia. enslaved them now, a lot of them. Okay, what are you going to say, Deke? What no, um, the people over there, um, Lord up some of us, did I say Hebrew? Did I say? Lord up, but being closer, we're getting closer in. Where is Abyssinia? Hebrew, where's in the bottom? Yeah. Hebrew. Above Abyssinia? No, under Hebrew. The word, yeah, he's circling it. Uh, I don't that word is. What does that say? I uh, know that is. Okay. I'll go over to the. Zoom it in more. Can you bring it in more? Yemen Jews over there, because right across the water, we would sail back and forth. So a lot of, it's a lot of the people, philosophers came, but they came from Yemen, because you could sail across Yemen and you go to Ethiopia. They were fleeing from the Arabs. We sailed across the, in, in, in Ethiopia, fleeing from um, Islam, 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 uh, Islamation. Islamation, pretty much. Yep. You ran over there. Hey, you got, see at the top there, it says Elephantine Jews. Elephantine I remember Jews. reading that in uh, Babylon the Timbuk, too. Yeah, he, he, he made that up. That's not real information. Oh, that's not real? Yeah, I know. Yeah, We're okay. making this up. <laughs> yeah, that's what the apologetics say. Oh, that's not real. Oh, he made that up. They stupid as hell. But uh, this is, like Deacon Einstein was saying, this is accurate. And this is how they knew who to get. This is how they knew who to make agreements with to sell the children of Israel into slavery. And this stuff is amazing, you know? So, from there, give me the next pics uh, that you got, Canada. I want the one of the Hamites and the Shemites. Let me look. Yeah, right there. Let's start with that one. These are the Hamites and the Shemites, the Nilotes. And the Bantus being sold. The Nilots got the axe, chopping us up. Okay, they got the yokes of wood around our neck with a bar of iron or whatever that bar is made of. Let's give me the next picture. Give me the next one. I'm going to come back to that. Okay, right here. You got the Nilots and uh, this Ishmael. I'm sorry. Ishmael got us in captivity. sub saharan slave trade. Blow it up big. Blow it up big. Look on the left on the, the, the camel's basket. You got babies in the basket right there. Babies in the basket taking us into slavery. That's everybody going to pay. There's justice coming to this earth. <laughs> hey, Bishop, that if you want. that's the sons of God they doing that too. That's God people. That's right. That's the real Jews they doing that too. Mm -hmm. You think God ain't, you think and judgment coming on the Arabs, Esau and all of them for what they did, man? <laughs> uh, real quick, look up um Harriton, H A R A T I N. This is this is them today. Those of us who were not sold off in the ships, so they kept us there and, and had slaves there for themselves. These are the descendants right here. They also call us Moors. They call them Moors too. H A R A T I N. Wikipedia, real quick. And I use Wikipedia. I use it. You stupid ass. Even. Apologetics. Give a damn what you think. Read this, that's the sister right there. That's clearly us. There's no denying this. Right. Read that there. Harriton. 
Arabic. No, it's an Arabic word, right? It's also Arabic. referred to as Haritine or Haritan mm -hmm. or Haritani, are a North African ethnic group native to Western Sahel and Southwestern Maghreb. The Haritan are mostly found in modern Mauritania. That's what they are today. That's what happens to slaves today over there, secretly. Go ahead. Where they form a plurality. Morocco, We're Western there. Sahara, mm -hmm. and Algeria. That's where they find Haritans. Go ahead. In Tunisia. They have us the slaves there too. And Libya. They are referred to as Choakin, Koshin, Koshin, Koshine, or Koshan. That's the same. They got that word in Koshin India. Jews. Yes, yeah, Yes, India, yes right. that's the same people. Mm -hmm. You got it. Scroll it down. You got it. The Haritans are both culturally and ethnically distinct from modern sub Saharan Africans. They're not the same. Right. They know the difference. <laughs> ethnically, ethnically distinct from modern sub Saharan Africans. Not the same. You keep going. And speak Maghrebi Arabic dialects as well as various Berber, Berber languages. I booked map earlier Berber Jews. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. Go ahead. They have traditionally been characterized as the descendants of former sub Saharan slaves and the original inhabitants of the Sahara. That was it, like zipping there. Mm -hmm. Keep going. They form the single largest defined ethno-linguistic group in Mauritania, where they account for 40% of the population. There's a lot more of us. There's a lot of us over there. Go ahead. In parts of Arab Berber, Maghreb, they are sometimes referred to as a socially distinct class of workers. Slaves. Keep going. The Haritan have been and still commonly are socially isolated in Maghrebi countries. Living in what? Living in segregated, Haritan only ghettos. You can't make this up. You cannot make it up. We are in ghettos everywhere. Go ahead. They are commonly perceived as endogamous group of former slaves or descendants of slaves. They favorably adopted Islam under the Arabs and Berbers. They, they forced us to. Go ahead. And were forcibly recruited into the Moroccan army by Ismail Ibn Sharif, Sultan of Morocco from 1672 to 1727, to consolidate power. They used us to fight in their wars. Like in Spain, same thing. Go ahead. Traditionally what? Traditionally, many Haritans have held occupations in agriculture. Yeah, sharecropping, same thing. Go ahead. As serfs. Slaves. Herdsmen. Slaves again. And indentured workers. Slaves again. That's it. That's all I want. Wow. Go back to those images again. So that's some heavy stuff right there. Go back to them images you had. Right. So that's what Deacon was bringing out. The Haritan. Go ahead. Next one. These are the yokes of iron of Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Give me the next one. Okay. Again, these are the uh, Hamites uh, bringing the Shemites into slavery. Go ahead. And look at, wait, wait, go back to that one. Look, the Hamite got an axe ready to chop my man. Look, zoom in on that. Come on. Right there. Just zoom in on that. He about to chop my man up. The hell is this? Give me the next picture. Was there more on that? Right. Yokes of iron. Brass bells was over our heaven. Iron shackles on our feet. Next one. Next one. Was that it? All right, give me, go back now. Go back to the one with the uh, colonizers. Right there. Put that, blow it up. So if y'all see this group of, you got black Christians now, you got the white man in the midst of them. They were being indoctrinated into white supremacy. Okay? That's what was happening. This is when the white man had the, uh, what is it called? The Belgium Conference or Scramble for Africa. Okay, and they were forcing us and teaching us that Christ is white, God is white. Because prior to that, we always knew God and Christ looked like us. When the Lord said, let us make man in our image, his image was our image, not the Europeans' image. Okay, give me the next one. I had one with uh, Caesar, some sketches. I know some of y'all are new, so I'm just going through it again. Okay. Caesar bow, right there. This is what they were forcing on us. And this was made up in the 1400s. Commissioned by uh, Pope Alexander VI of Rome, he commissioned Caesar, uh, Leonardo da Vinci 
to paint his son as the new image of Christ, Caesar the Prince. And this is what all your mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers worship. Mine too. It's all, all what they worship. Was there another one? Yeah, put that on the screen. Yeah, thank you. And this one is the one they say that we, we, we made this up. Got these dumb apologetics. That's a photograph. How the hell we make that up? <laughs> and we got the original books. They, they may have taken it out of the new printed ones, according to them. Or they just lying. They're lying. But it's in there. They repainting, paint, whitewashing, all the black images that we did. Okay? From there, give me Hosea 3 and 5. 3 and 4, please. Hosea chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Hosea chapter 3 and verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. We have abided many days without a king. You know what's funny about that? You get these dumb apologetics that say when they read, hey, give me that in Deuteronomy 28. Is it 26? The one about the king. I'm not looking at it, so I need you to find it for me. It says the king which you shall set up, you shall go into captivity with you. What? Verse 36. Let me hear that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. So now the Christians go, well, who's your king? I'm talking about white folks. Who's the king? Who's the king over? Now, we throughout Africa, there were many kings. What was the name of that king? King Ty Tyke? Tiki? Teki. He went into slavery. He was the one that caused the... Hey, type it in the, in the thing so y'all know who I'm talking about. Don't let these stupid, evil Christians ever get one up on you. I don't know. I forgot how to spell it. Is it T-Y or T-K? T-A-C-K-Y. You sure that's how to spell it? So T-A-K-Y. Okay. He did the first rebellion in Jamaica. Put it on the screen right there, right there. Click it. There's the Ghanaian king who came over in slavery and led the first slave rebellion in Jamaica. The hell are you talking about? So stop listening to these evil, dumb Christians. Okay, hey, is there an article that goes with that? I, we ain't going to read the article. I just want y'all to see the article. Yeah, click that. The story of, that's how, you, that's how they spelled his name. T-A-K-Y-I, the story of Taki, the Ghanaian king who led a slave rebellion in Jamaica in 1760. Don't let these evil Christians ever try to deceive you. Because once you prove them with this, they'll go, well, who else you got? Who, who? Don't worry about it. Throughout Northern King, they had many kings. Many kings. And a lot of them are unnamed kings. Watch this. Go back to Hosea 3 and 4. Now, here's the clincher. The book of Hosea, chapter 3, verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. Hey, who was, the king? Who was our king in 70 AD under Rome? We didn't have one! That was wrong with these Christians. They're evil, manipulative, deceived. They work for the devil. I'm telling you straight. And you have to talk about your mama too. She worked for the devil. Read on. And without a prince. And without a prince. And without a sacrifice. And the prince is going to the high priest. Go ahead. And without an image. And, and see that part? And without an image. Go back to the iconoclism. Go back to iconoclism. Now I want the painting. I want the painting right there. That's it. This is it without an image. They have destroyed much of the black art. Much of it. That's what it means without an image. Now, hey, we were looking at the, uh, what was the movie? RRR on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. And we were like looking at the movie. And in India, they do stories of rebellion against the British. Then you got, y any of y'all know about Ip Man, Ip Man? That's rebellion against the British, kicking the British out. The Boxers Rebellion. But with our people, it's like forbidden for us to do movies like that. That's why when the brother Nate Parker tried to do uh, Birth of a Nation, he had no help. No, said, oh, no, no, I say go like that. Don't be doing that. And forget Northern Kingdom. So I think Northern Kingdom got, let me think, they got the, is it called the Three Butterflies? In the time of the butterfly, that's about three women, though. It ain't the same. It ain't the same. So forget Northern King. We're like, damn, we don't have movies of rebellion against the white man. It's like forbidden. But all the other nations, they got it. They can do it. They are allowed to. Do. Even in Africa, you would think the Africans, they got media. They don't do no movies about kicking the white man out. None. 
Whoa, you can't make this stuff up. Read that again. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image. I remember the first image the black man had as a hero. I don't know how many old heads might know. Blank man. Y'all remember that? Put that on the screen. Put it on the screen, blank man. That was our hero. And it was gone. I was mad. I said, what the hell is this, mommy? This ain't Superman. This ain't Batman. There's a media man. Look at this. Look at this. Blank man. Look at this. This one, that was a hero. We had this garbage. Put a media man with, I forgot his brother's name. Robert Towns, a media man. So yeah, blank man, then media man came. It was ridiculous. Meteor, meteor man. Yeah, he was ridiculous. Totally a clown, a buffoon, but he tried. Robert Townsend tried, but the, you know, the white writers around, no, you can't be powerful like that. Mm -mm. You cannot be Superman. No, 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 no. You could be a klutz, though. That's what the Bible means, without an image. The black man has had no image. No image of her as being a hero. We can't save the black woman. Any movie that she's in trouble, here comes the white man to save her. We could never do it. It's always impossible. We're gonna say. Yeah, yeah, bitch. And all the images that we look up to and that we had, the leaders, they murdered and killed them. That's what they did. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, they killed every last one of them. Every, every leader that rides up and any image that we tried to look up to, Esau get rid of them. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, Hancock. I forgot about Hancock with, uh, what's his name? Will Smith. In love with the white woman. Drunk. He was a drunk. He was a drunk. What do you say? Close we got to her, the week we got. Exactly. Money in. <laughs> right. Did you finish that? Read that again. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod. Ephod is the bread. Hey, put ephod on the car. I know people are new. They're like, what's an ephod? Let's type it in. Ephod. Type it in. Right. Put it on the screen. The ephod is the breastplate. Let me see. They ain't got one that's by itself. Okay. Right there, right, right there in the center. The ephod was the breastplate that the high priest wore that symbolized the 12 tribes of Israel. That thing right in the center. Okay. So we wouldn't have that no more. Now, you know what's not funny, but in Ghana, the king would wear that. There's images of the Ashanti king that used to wear that. Okay. Um, give me that. You. Read on. And without teraphim. And teraphim. Give me that real quick. 1 Samuel 19, 13. About teraphim. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 19 and verse 13. And Macaul took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, he said, he is sick. And Saul sent messengers again to see David, saying, bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. So the, the teraphim was just something that symbolized who you were. I'll give you a better example. If y'all saw the movie Braveheart, Remember they had these little um, dolls that represented, he said, this is my wife, this is my son. Anybody know what I'm talking about in the movie Brave? Gladiator, was it Gladiator? Gladiator, Gladiator. thank you, thank you. Uh, they carry these little images of their family. Today we have what? Photographs. It's the same thing. Very same thing that symbolize your aunts, your uncle, whoever. So that's what it means by teraphim. Go ahead. And when the messages will come in. No, 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 no. go back to Hosea. Yes, sir. Hosea chapter 3, verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without teraphim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return. This is us today. We're returning now. This is prophecy. Go ahead. And seek the Lord their God. And we're seeking the Lord our God. And David their king. And that's two, uh, twofold meaning, but it's going into Christ first and foremost. Go ahead. And shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. That's the prophecy. We're in the latter days now. Now watch this. Give me the Willie Lynch letters. You went over it today, so I'm just going to skim through it. 
I gave you, I think it's three sheets Captain Joel sent me. All right, let me see. Let me look. Put it on the screen so I can see. Oh, give me the one before it. Okay. Uh, read that real quick. Read, let's read, start from the top and read. Start at the top. Start at the top. And from there. You read this earlier today. Read it quick, not slow. I need you to just go through it because he covered it already. Yes, sir. The breaking process of the African woman. Then take the female. Run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desires. That's Women, the white man talking. Go ahead. Test her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. Mm -hmm. If she shows any signs of resistance in submitting completely to your will, do not hesitate to use the bull whip on her to strike the last bit of bitch out of her. That's what the white man done did to her. Now that was abuse right there, but nobody talk about that. But go ahead. Take care not to kill her. So when it says take care not to kill her, when you read, for example, the book of Matthew, it says, and they killed the children from two years old and under. That's talking about the boys. They killed the boys. Not They didn't kill the girls. Why? Because the boys carried the race on. Your seed carries the race, not her. So that's why it says, don't kill the woman. Go ahead. This is why they're getting cops. You ever see these women in the cops' face? Ah, yeah, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You ain't going to kill me. I'm a woman. They, the mindset's always been there from this time point. Read it again. Take care not to kill her. For in doing so, you spoil good economics. She's good economics. She's a, what they call them, baby breeders. Go ahead. <laughs> when in complete submission. When in complete submission. She will train her offspring in the early years to submit to labor when they become of age. She will train them to be good slaves. Go ahead. Understanding is the best thing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we shall go deeper into this area of the subject matter concerning what we have produced here in the breaking process of the female nigger. Mm. We have reversed the relationships. So they reversed the relationship between male and female. She's and her, the modern woman. Good. Yeah, and you remember, Bishop, they said what they had produced. I mean, we're dealing with produce mm -hmm. of the white man. Exactly. Good. In her natural, uncivilized state. Why do they say uncivilized? Because they say civilization began with the Greeks. So her natural, uncivilized state, she ain't following the white man. That's the natural, uncivilized state. Go ahead. She would have a strong dependency on the uncivilized nigger man. She would have a natural dependency on the black man. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. And she would have a limited protective tendency toward her independent male offspring mm -hmm. and would raise the female offspring to be dependent like her. You see that? She would have a limited protective tendency toward her independent male offspring. Because after a certain age, when a boy get big enough, he got to be with daddy. He has to be with the father. That's why they always, that side of the room, can you come get him? He don't listen to me. He don't, my beatings don't work on him. It don't work, because she, how she beat you? Pap, pap. And the boy's like, yeah, oh, ouch, ooh, ow, ooh. I remember growing up, I'm a little more slicker than my brothers, though, because I knew what was happening. My mom be beating us, and I said, you know what? I know what's going to happen if I act like it ain't hurting me. So I fall on the floor. Oh, God, Jesus! Oh, oh, oh! And my brothers, my two brothers, they bigger than me. They be like, ooh, ouch, ah, ooh. She go, wait till your daddy get home. Yeah, yeah. So he come home what in the morning. She had, I hear her whispering. Like, ah, 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 tap, tap, tap. He didn't come in with a belt. He came with a baseball bat and drugged them two out the bed and beat the hell out of them. I'm laying in the bed grinning. Oh, I already got my beat. I already got my. <laughs> Where we at? Come on back to this. Nature had provided for this type of balance. We reversed nature by burning and pulling one civilized nigga apart and boom. Get your hand off the mouse. We reversed nature by burning and pulling one civilized nigga apart and bull whipping the other to the point of death. All in her presence. Now stop right there. I, now you might ask, why am I pausing there? Because that's in the book of Acts. Give me that real quick, Acts 12. I think it's verse three. I ain't looking at it. I want the one about, it says James got killed. Then what Peter, I want Peter. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Acts chapter 12 and verse one. And he killed James, excuse me, verse two. And he killed James, the brother of John mm -hmm. with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, 
he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So it said they didn't kill Peter. They took Peter. Why? They wanted to make Peter a public example. Why? What we just read here, where it said uh, we reverse nature by burning and pulling one civilized nigger apart and bullwhipping the other to the point of death all in her presence. That's what they always did. Said so we got to make a public example to these Israelites, these Christians, to break their spirit so that they will never follow this heresy Christ stuff. That's what they wanted to do with Peter. But when you read the history, it says the angel took Peter out of the prison. Everybody with me so far? Yes, All right, let's go on back to this. Read on. By her being left alone, unprotected, with the male image destroyed. See that? With the male image destroyed. Right, he can't protect you. That's what we just read in Hosea 3 and 4. So a lot of times we just use it as the... The black man's face is not shown as a hero, but it's deeper than that. It's shown that our image, we don't have an image of protection at all with her. Go ahead. The ordeal caused her to move from her psychological dependent state to a frozen independent state. The independent woman now. Go ahead. In this frozen psychological state of... Give me the next one. I don't think you got the next page, but it's all right. Give me the next uh, thing you got. All right. So let's start here. Watch this. Warning, possible interloping negatives. Earlier, we talked about the non-economic good of the horse and the nigger in their wild or natural state. We talked out of the principle of breaking and tying them together for orderly production. Furthermore, we talked about paying particular attention to the female savage and her offspring for orderly future planning. Then, more recently, we stated that by reversing the positions of the male and female savages, we had created an orbiting cycle that turns on its own access forever. So that psychological destruction would be turning around forever, like a ring. They'll always be destroyed. Read. Unless What's that word? What's that word? Phenomenal. No, no, no. The first word. Unless. 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 So they said we could keep these people in slavery forever with a destroyed image. Unless. Unless what? Phenomenon occurred. Unless phenomena occurred. Go ahead. And reshifted the positions of the male and female savages. That phenomena is the word of God. That's right. That's what that phenomena is. All praises. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. Give me that in uh, John 14, 26. Christ said that thing. Christ that, spoke about that. Where's yeah, that means all their thinking of the black woman is a dead thing right there. Right. Because she's not thinking of herself. She has to acknowledge all these all her thinking coming from there. Read that. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. This is the phenomenon. But the comforter, which is of the Holy Ghost. The comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will send in my name. Mm -hmm. He shall teach you all things. The Holy Ghost will teach you all things. Go ahead. And bring all things to your remembrance. And bring all things to your remembrance. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. You ever hear these Christians? Now, I know I grew up in a daggone Christian church. They make me sick. I got the Holy Ghost. Well, who are you in the Bible? I'm a child of God. No, 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 man. No, no, no. There's many nations. Which nation are you? I don't know. Well, why'd you go into slavery? I don't know. The Bible says the Holy Ghost would bring all things to your remembrance. And you don't remember ish. So you ain't mama, you, daddy, you all ain't got no Holy Ghost. Stop the lies. You don't know nothing about yourselves at all. So you don't read it again. Read it again. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things mm -hmm. and bring all things to your remembrance. Bring all things to your remembrance. Go ahead. Whatsoever I have said unto you. And Christ spoke about us going into captivity amongst all nations. They don't know about the Christian. No, I don't know nothing about that because you don't have the Holy Ghost. That's why. So when somebody asks you, do you have the Holy Ghost? What's the answer, brothers? Yes. What's the answer, sisters? Yes. They, it's, the answer is yes. We remember what the Bible says we are, who we are, what happened to us. Okay. From there, Ezekiel 37. I was watching a video. I think it was an officer, Matt, from um, what's the, New Orleans. And he asked the preacher... I'm sidetracked just for a moment. He said, do you have to keep the commandments to get the Holy Ghost? And the preacher goes, 
do you have to keep the commandments to get the... He didn't know the answer. Give me that John 14, 15. <laughs> we, we just read John 14, 26, right? Now let's read verse 15. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Read. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So the stipulation to the Holy Ghost is keeping God's commandments. Right. Now, here's another one in Proverbs 1. It might be around. I ain't looking at it. Help me out here. It says, turn ye at my reproof. It's around 20, 21, 19, 20, somewhere there. I got you, sir. What verse? The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 23. Okay. Turn you at my reproof. Turn you at my reproof. God's reproof is his commandments. He's saying, turn to that. Go ahead. I will pour out my spirit unto you. And I'll pour out my spirit unto you. So the stipulation for the Holy Spirit is turning towards God's laws and commandments. Everybody see that? Yes, Stop listening to dumb, evil Christians. I got the Holy Spirit. No, you don't, you adulterer. You were just sucking rod the last week. What the hell wrong with you? And that ain't your husband either. The hell is this? Anyway, was that it? No, sir. Go ahead. I will make known my words unto you. Then he says, and I will make known my words unto you. That goes back to verse 26 in John 14. We shall bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I said unto you, saying the same thing. Stop listening to these evil Christians, y'all. Some of y'all going to get caught up in here. Listening to Rex Humbard or Jimmy Swaggart. No, those are old school. Who are these new pastors? Jamal Bryant, Joel Osteen, Creflo, and T.D. Juanita, oh God, Juanita, she got stomped out. I'm sorry, is it Juanita, but you know, you didn't know how to control you. That Jezebel spirit, I don't know what's up. Where we at? You wanted Ezekiel 37? Ezekiel 37, thank you. What verse, Bishop? One. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse one. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them. So Ezekiel is walking. He sees a vision of a valley of bones, skulls, skeletons all over the place. This valley that we're reading about right here, write this down. The valley is Babylon the Great. Mm. Hold, hold that, hold that. Give me the precept, Revelation 11 and 8. I want the dead body part. I, I don't know if it's verse 8. Just popped in my head. I want dead bodies. Don't read the Old Testament. Shut up. Go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8. We in a new now. Go ahead. And their dead bodies mm -hmm. shall lie in the street of that great city. The great city is Babylon the Great. Go ahead. Which spiritually, Which spiritually is called Sodom, Sodom and Egypt. Egypt. Where also our Lord was crucified. Where also our Lord was crucified. That's Jerusalem. Go on back. Ezekiel 37 and 1 again. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. So these bones are the dead bodies. Go ahead. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. And lo, they were very. So these dead bodies represented what? Our people in the midst of sodomy. What else did it say? So Egypt, we were worshiping all kinds of idols. And then it said, well, also our Lord was crucified. We hated the true sayings of Christ. We hated his image. We, we wanted him dead. So that's what them bones represented amongst the Israelites. Those are them three things. Go ahead. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? Mm -hmm. And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Watch this. And I will lay sinews upon you. Sinews going into the flesh. Go ahead. And will bring up flesh upon you. That's identity, nationality. And cover you with skin. Cover you with skin. And put breath in you. And ye shall live. So let me explain verse 6. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. So that first part, which goes into the, the flesh, the, sin, the sinews, the flesh, and the skin, that's during, for example, during the turbulent 60s, when we were trying to organize ourselves under black power, under some type of unity. Give me uh, 
Let me look. Do I want to read on? Read on. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Go ahead. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Come on. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. So the bones started to shake. Go ahead. And the bones came together. And the bones started to come together. Bone to his bone. Bone to his bone. Go ahead. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them. The sinews, the muscles formed, the flesh came on them. Go ahead. And the skin covered them above. Mm -hmm. But there was no breath in them. But there was them. no breath in them. The breath. Let me get the breath real quick. John 6, 63. I think that's, is that the verse I want? And we're going to come right on back. Let's clear it. Okay. The book of John, chapter 6, and verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm, that spirit, that ain't the one I want. Give me, uh, yes, I want that one. Is it Proverbs? Yeah, give me that one. Proverbs 7 1. Let me look, let me look. But that was good. I like that one. I do like the one we just read. But there was something I'm looking for. Go ahead, read it. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 2. Keep my commandments and live, uh -huh. and my law as the apple of thine eye. Give me Genesis 2, 7. Genesis 2, 7. These are the precepts that go with that. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That's what I wanted. Breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Then you got John 6, 63. Then you got Proverbs 7 and 2. So those three go together. Everybody with me so far? Yes. Write that down. Write that down. So when we go back to Ezekiel 37 and verse 8, I want you to pay close attention. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 8. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. So when it says there was no breath in them, were, were our people not keeping the laws of God? Hey, Canada, come pay attention. Give me, give me the clips with Marcus. I, I sent you a, a group of them. Marcus Garvey and them. Start with him, then give me the rest. So during, for example, during the time of this, from the time of, I'll start from Marcus, because then the civil rights came after him, but I'll start there for a reason. Yeah. Marcus Garvey was one of the large, he had one of the largest organizations, the UNIA. Okay, but guess what? With all that black unity, they were not keeping no laws of God. Give me the next one. Come on, give me the next one. It shouldn't take that long. Okay, you got uh, Malcolm X. Didn't keep no laws, not no laws of the Bible, okay? Be it shaved, worshiping uh, Allah, okay? But they were, they were trying to unite and unify black people. Give me Stokey Carmichael and Malcolm, uh, Martin. Martin Luther King, come on now. You got Martin Luther King, Stokey Carmichael, okay? Try to unite and unify black people. They were not keeping any laws, though. They were trying to unify us. Give me the Black Panthers, please. Fred Hampton, come on. Black Panther Party, again. They had some great, and these people, don't get me wrong, they had great ideas, admirable ideas. And the Lord used them to get us to this point today. Okay, so I'm not knocking them. But they did do things that, um, if we were back during that time, if we was teaching, we would have been killed. Okay. That's why, hey, Bishop, that's why none of you men should speak evil against none of these, none of these men that, that, that the Lord used to pave the way. You know, Martin Luther King, Mark, Malcolm X, even though the teaching was wrong, they, the Lord, they, they gave their life for what they believe in. You understand? They gave their life. How much are you men inside here going to give your life for Christ? Where they literally gave their life. They were killed. They believed in what they believe in and they stand for it and they died for it. And some of them in jail till this day for what they believe in. 
Because so men like that, you can't, you, you got to respect them. You got to respect it. Because it's a spirit that God put on them. The Bible prophesied these men rising up and do that. The Bible prophesied Judah hand being in the neck of his enemy. That was an error. That's that error. That's that prophecy being fulfilled. That's these men right here. Yeah, they, uh, you know, the character of these men, they're showing you how they love their people. They are willing to do anything just to open our eyes to see something great in us. When that time, we didn't see nothing great in us. That was the beginning, like Bishop said. Right. And again, it's unwise to speak evil against these men because were not for their efforts that they made, despite their ideologies being false, they paved the way for us to teach out in the streets today. They're the reason why we're out in the streets today, legally able to do so. Civil rights is because these men put their lives on the line, despite how wrong they were and the spirit not being in them. It is unwise as a teacher, especially if you know who you are, and to disrespect these men. Um, because they're ones who are responsible for allowing you to have the liberties you have to teach in the street in the first place. You cannot forget those things. Hey, Bishop, can I add something? Because the other night, you had some apologists, and Friday night wrote Disrupt the Class, and they brought up R.E.R. And I said, I never met him. I said, yes, he was here before us, and he laid the foundation for what we were teaching, but I learned the keeping of the commandments from Bishop Nathaniel. And these other Israelite camps bombarded me, saying that I was disrespecting him. Okay? When I was watching the camps before, before there was any YouTube or there was social media, there was nobody telling you to put fringes on all your clothes. Okay? So I was there when the split happened. I just came in, and there was nobody uh, explaining to us on how to keep the Sabbath, no buying and selling. There was no Feast of Tabernacles, Passover videos like you're seeing now. So when I started challenging them and showing them, give me, because I have VHS tapes. Remember, I gave you a box of VHS tapes. I had Because one of the cameramen from the old school, Bishop Gawasop, was friends with him, and he preserved the material. And I watched all of them, hundreds of tapes. And there was no video of a whole bunch of Feast of Tabernacles being kept, Passover being kept, Purim being kept. All that stuff is new. So again, I just want to say to the people that may listen to this later on, the same thing we were saying about our black revolutionary leaders, don't disrespect them. The same thing the bishop taught, don't disrespect R.E.R. and the men that were before us. Okay, but as far as where we are now, the Most High made us grow in increments, in steps. Right. And we give credit where credit is due. Right. right. Even even the, the leaders that was before us. You will never see none of the leaders and them inside there speak evil on none of them because the bishop didn't teach us to rule like that. His elders, you will never see us or him speak evil of them. Understand? And that's just out of respect on the work that these men put in. Okay? Right. Give me the next picture. And regardless, like, I, belie I believe uh, but, uh, one of them died from drugs. Right. So regardless of that, because somebody will bring that, 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 don't, that has nothing to do with the price of beans in Haiti. We got, they still did a work that you would be scared to do. Okay. Read on. I mean, go to the next picture. You got Fred Hampton. They just said a movie about him. Okay. They killed him. Okay. He was like, what, 22? He was young. 21? Give me the next one. Okay, that was when he, that was his barrel. What, what happened? <laughs> hey, sorry, hey, Bishop, man. Bishop, and the thing about it, these men at this time, a lot of them, a lot of the women was holding them down. They yes. was ride or die. You know, these women was what what we'll call a strong black woman today. Not not these not these fake feminist females you see today. Right. These women was a strong because. She was strong black woman because they was there with their man in the struggle, getting their ass whooped, being hosed, dog being set on them. These women at that time, the 60s and 70s, they are what you call a strong black woman. They supported their man. They kept their house together. Right. Not these fake, fake feminists that you see today. Exactly. What's the next picture? This was the Brown Berets. This was Issachar coming together. Because the Black Panthers inspired the other tribes to unite and come together. That's the Brown Berets, they were called. Give me the next one. 
Um, I believe it's the, it might be Brown Beret. I forgot, but it might be Young Lords. I'm not sure. I forgot off the top. Uh, but they were, the Northern Kingdom was starting to come together. They were inspired by the Black Panther movement. Go ahead. Uh, that was AIM, the American Indian movement. Okay, they came together because of the Panthers, what they were doing. Okay, next one. This is all during the 60s. You did a class on that, right? Did a good class on that. Uh, AIM again, American Indian movement. Next one. Okay. All right, and this is when Israel started coming up. See, it says the Moorish Zionist temple of the Moorish Jews. Okay. That Israel started to come up too in that time that's in, during the 60s, even before that a little bit. Give me the next one. I want the next one. I thought I sent it to you. I see Yaquav right there. I'm looking at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, give me before that. Go before that back, right? Yes, thank you. Come on, y'all. No, no, pay attention, Canada. I need y'all to know your own history. You can get on TV and look like a clown. They'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? Who don't know what happened? Okay, there's a, there's a blurry picture. That's Alba Bivens on my right and Arya when he was young. He's about 12 on the left. Okay. So Bivens taught Arya on them. And my, give me the next one with Yaquab. Thank you. Back. One brother, no. What's, what's wrong with this Canada, brother? What's wrong with him? <laughs> He's from Canada. This is Yaquab. This is Arya's father. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They should be very mindful that he's black. Oh, he's black. Okay. You from Haiti too? You from Haiti? No. no why do I have to be Haiti? Oh, okay. He's from Canada. Give, give, me, give me the next one. So this was uh, Arya growing up from 12 year old picture you saw. That's him in the red. Masha is in the black on the right. Okay. So that's where we stem from. Okay. So from there, go back now. Let's go back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Meaning no laws. They weren't keeping the commandments. Now, when I came in, they were keeping some laws. They were keeping, not like we are doing today, all praise, but that's what the Lord gave them in the understanding. Because, for example, on the Sabbath, if you ever see any of the old videos, you'll see men selling oils on the Sabbath. We were buying and selling. We were going to restaurants on the Sabbath. Uh, what didn't we do on the Sabbath? We didn't have sex on the Sabbath. We didn't do that. What else didn't we do on the Sabbath? That was it. That's the law we did on the Sabbath. No sex. <laughs> um, and we can't, right, don't eat pork. We grew up beards. Uh, sisters only had to wear a dress when they came and cover their head when they came to the school. When they left the school, they could look like hoochie mamas, which a lot of them did. Um, what else were we doing? Um, hmm. We did keep Passover. We kept Passover. We did Feast of Tabernacles. Let me think. No, we didn't have tents, none of that. We would go to a park and play sports, checkers, things like that, and go home. We'd be out there for like maybe an hour, two hours, and go home. Um, and that pretty much it. Um, if, if, wish Bishop Yawasat was here. But anyway, so we back. Read on. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy unto the wind. Go ahead. Prophesy, prophesy, son of man, Come on. and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath. This is talking about the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. And breathe upon these slain that they may live. Give me that in John 3 and 8. John 3 and 8. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth. Talking about the Spirit. Go ahead. And thou hearest the sound thereof. You hear the sound of it. Go ahead. But canst not tell whence it cometh. You can't tell where the spirit is coming from. Go ahead. And whither it goeth. You Meaning you can't tell who the spirit is going to land on. Go ahead. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. Because when that word go out, you don't know. It'd be the least likely one in the audience you think will start to repent and believe. The least likely. It might be that big mouth brother or big mouth sister. That, rah, 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 rah. It might be that one. You never know. Like, for example, the Apostle Paul. Who'd have thunk that the Apostle Paul would ever repent? That dude was killing Israel. Okay, but he was the one. Well, said, oh, I'm choosing this one. What? That guy. That guy. Yeah, that guy. Yes. Hey, hey, Bishop, when, when you was teaching on Eastern Parkway, I was the least one you all thought would repent. Yeah, you was out there. I was uh, called getting the cops uh, on you. <laughs> Stop putting those drugs under that <laughs> container. We see you over there. Well, why are you going to pull up my spot? Why are you going to do that? 
<laughs> hey, you, them other brothers was listening. They I put mean, a hit out on me. Your guys put a hit out on me. Nah, they, it was good. Nobody wasn't touching. They was going. Yet. They wanted to kill me. Though. Yeah, but I don't like yo. Leave you alone. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Bishop used to, yo, it gets so bad, we like, man, when the Bishop come out there, we, me and Tabas, like, yo, we ain't even going out there, man. It, when the word of God going out, you can't even make no money, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you're like, damn, we can't, you know, we, let's wait till they leave, then we go out there, you know? <laughs> but, go ahead, go ahead, what you gonna say? but that show that you never know who the Lord is going to wake up. Mm -hmm. You know, because I was there, I was rebellious, and I, I, was, I was very argumentative. I used to say slick stuff to the bishop and them when they teaching, but eventually the Lord he he said I, I'm gonna I'm gonna wake you up I'm gonna choose you, you understand? And the other men and them that was listening, you know, all praises, all praises. <laughs> Woo! Well, Tobias came in too. Yeah, but the most I had to kick him in his head a couple yeah. of times, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They was the rude boys, the real original rude boys out there. <laughs> where we at? Where we at now? Uh, Ezekiel thirty-seven. And what verse? We read verse, verse ten. Oh, yes, sir. Ezekiel chapter thirty-seven, verse ten. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. And hey, you know what Ezekiel saw? He saw you brothers marching on the... Hey, get, hey, Canada, find me something. Canada, find me something, man. Quick, brother. Not something I gave you. I want you to find me something. What is purple, wrong with Canada? The purple, what purple marching. Over here? Men conference or something like that. Yeah, the Memphis men's conference or something. Hey, the, the only thing the Lord didn't say is that they had on purple. Otherwise, yes, exactly. You know, that would put spirits on us, you yes, know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that would be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We all be, you know, so the Lord just said he saw an arm. Did you, hey, did you, look at that, look at that. Somebody come look at this. Read it again, read it again. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. That's what the Lord showed Ezekiel in the vision. He said, that's it right there. That's it right there. That's that thing. All praises, all praises. So, all right, so the Holy Spirit, now give me John 14, 26 again. We're going to go right back to that, because I know we got a short attention span. Huh? Hey, Bishop, you, you know, dudes like you, what the hell? You telling me that's, it's not, it's not talking about IU. You know the haters is online right now. <laughs> I know. They're yeah, online yeah, right talk. now, mad and but, hating. But, yeah, who, but who is, the uh, army is a structure. It's structure, government, and all of that. Who is doing that? Who got that set up? You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, but... Uh, Again, the army is not to be for guys. Oh, okay. You read about that. Hey, read that. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Now give me Revelation eleven eleven. Revelation, verse, chapter 11, verse 11. And after the and after three days and a half, after three hundred and fifty years, the spirit of life from God entered into them. See that the spirit of life from God entered into them. That's John fourteen twenty six. That's Ezekiel thirty seven ten. Go ahead. And they stood upon their feet. And they stood upon their feet. Go ahead. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. Why? Because they said they're waking up. They're waking up. All that Psalms eighty three thing we did. They're waking. Up, and that's what's happening right now. Understand what's going on, brothers and sisters. Understand. So the Holy Spirit would remind us and remember and bring all things to our remembrance that we are the Israelites and that the curses we fell under for breaking God's commandments. Okay, He would tell us the Spirit would show us why we went into slavery. Okay, we will remember that Christ fulfilled the law of animal sacrifice. The Spirit would show you that, and how He would redeem us from the curse of the law. Give me that in Galatians three thirteen. Christ would redeem us from the curse of the law. The book of Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law. Here's a question. Uh, you, what's the curse of the law? Come on, stand on the mic, get on the mic. Yeah, you, what you looking around for? I need a sacrifice. 
I'm a somebody. I'm gonna throw myself off the podium. Levi. Yo, leave. Where you man. from Haiti? You yo, from Haiti? Yeah, he, yo, go sit down. What yo, what is this? He said, "What he said? What he said? Animal sacrifice is the curse of the law." Reg, what no, is no, the so, Deuteronomy 20, uh, twenty-eight? I'm sorry. I was, okay. Did you hear somebody say that? Somebody whispered. Yeah, that somebody ear? say that, man. So the curse of the law. Give me that. Uh, Deuteronomy twenty-seven, the last verse. What? Because Christians don't know what the curse of the law is. So I'll, I'll give you point zero zero credit for that first answer of animal sacrifice. I'll just give you point zero zero one. Oh, you were writing? That's it? Okay, come on. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. So we fell under a curse. If we didn't abide in everything the law said, like whatever you, if you did certain sins, you had to sacrifice. You had to go to the Levites to sacrifice for certain sins. But then, 28, 15, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake so thee. So now he gives a list of the curse of the law. Christianity does not teach that they tried to erase our history. They are trying to erase us, but they can't. There is a God. That's right. Understand that thing. So the curse of the law, what are you going to say, Lava? What? Oh. <laughs> so the curse of the law is slavery, oppression, losing our identity. That's the curse of the law in a nutshell. Okay, being scattered worldwide, that is the curse of the law. We fall under that, not these other nations. That falls on we fall under that. So now somebody might say, Well, if Christ redeemed us from the curse, I'm gonna see who's thinking now because we already read the answer. If Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law in Galatians 3, why did we go into slavery on ships and why are we still suffering today? Anybody got a clue? If he redeemed us, you heard it. he redeemed us from the curse of the law. We still suffer. Nobody. I see one hand halfway up, so I'm not sure if you have an answer. Come on up. Come on. Shalom, Bishop. Shalom. Shalom. Christ bless. Because well, who things, are you? Brother Tekoa. Brother Tekoa. Yes, sir. Okay. Because all things must be fulfilled first. Very good. Yes. All th Remember we read that? All things must be fulfilled. Get, go back to that. Go back to that. Luke 21. In case y'all forgot. I know some of us are slow. The book of Luke, chapter 21, and verse 21. Then uh, let them which are in Judea no, all things must. Is that all things must be fulfilled? 24. Oh, 24. Excuse me. Verse 24. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. No, no 22. No. 22. Thank yes, you, sir. For these be the days of vengeance, that all these things which are written may be fulfilled. That's the answer. So there's a time limit to these curses having an end. And we know that we're in that time because what? We're waking up. Y'all right here, brothers and sisters online, is evidence the spirit is coming down, waking us up. So we're at the end time now, the very end. Okay, everybody understand that? Yes, sir. All right, all praise. So we would remember the Lord warned us. He would scatter us into the four corners, make our remembrance to cease from among men. John, Jeremiah 17, 4, please. Jeremiah 17, 4. This is what the Holy Spirit would undo. Jeremiah 17, 4. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. So that right, one verse right there is Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68. It fits all of that right there. We would lose our understanding. We'd lose everything. But Christ already promised us. He said, listen, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. He's going to bring all things to your remembrance again. Okay, everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, from there, Jeremiah 33, 24. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, and verse 24. Watch what the nations say. Go ahead. Considerest thou not what this people have spoken, saying, the two families which the Lord have chosen. The two families is the northern kingdom and southern kingdom, Judah and Ephraim. Go ahead. 
He has even cast them off. He cast them off. He got rid of them. Go ahead. Thus they have despised my people. The nations have despised us. That they should be no more a nation before them. That we should be no more a nation. They tried to erase us from history. Read. Thus saith the Lord, if my covenant be not with day and night, mm -hmm. and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth. So God said, I made an agreement, a covenant with the sun, moon, and stars. Go ahead. Then will I cast away the seed of Jacob. He said, if I didn't set a covenant with them that they would always be out there, then I will cast away the seed of Jacob. Go ahead. And David, my servant, mm -hmm. so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's some heavy stuff. What are you going to say? That's you got to really get into that. It give you goosebumps. The Lord said, as long as the sun, moon, and stars are there, there would we would always be around. The Israelites would be in. We would He would set us up as leaders, as rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what He promised. He prophesied that thing. Okay, from there, from there, Jeremiah eleven and six. I mean Zechariah. I apologize, Zechariah, Zechariah. The book of Zechariah, chapter 11 and verse 6. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land. That's talking about us. The Lord prophesied through Zechariah. Remember, this was during the Persian captivity. So during Persia, Zechariah prophesied regarding the Israelites, I will not have pity toward the inhabitants of the land. Go ahead. Say of the Lord, but lo, I will deliver the men, every one into his neighbor's hand. And into the hand of his king. And into the hand of his king. Watch this. Write this down. We're going to go to it. You get me John 19, 15. Who was the, what was the name of the king we were delivered into whose hand? It's going to tell you right here in John 19, 15. Because we ourselves had no king. Watch this. The book of John chapter 19 and verse 15. But, but they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. We have no king but the white man. That's what they were saying. Mm. Okay, that's what was going on. Go back now to Zechariah 11 and 6. Zechariah chapter 11 verse 6. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. But lo, I will deliver the men, every one into his neighbor's hand, mm -hmm. and into the hand of his king. And they shall smite the land. Rome shall smite the land. Mm -hmm. And out of their hand, I will not deliver them. The Lord said, I'm not going to deliver you out of the hand of Rome. That's what he's talking about. Read. And I will feed the flock of slaughter. We are the flock of the slaughter. Go ahead. Even you, O poor of the flock. We are the poor of the flock. Go ahead. And I took unto me two staves. And I took unto me two staves. I want you to pay close attention. Go ahead. The one I called beauty. That's the kingdom of Judah. Go ahead. And the other... I called bands. And the other I called bands. That's the northern kingdom. Write that down. Write that down. Go ahead. And I fed the flock. And I fed. Who, who fed us during this time? It was Christ that fed us. Christ is the one that fed us. Read. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month. Go ahead. And my soul loathed them. God said, and I hated them. And there so also abhorred me. And they hated me. Give me that in Mark 8.31 so we can get an understanding of what that's talking about. The book of Mark chapter 8 and verse 31. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. Son of Man, Christ must suffer many things. And be rejected of the elders. Mm -hmm. Be rejected of the elders. And of the chief priests. And the chief priests. And scribes. And scribes. That's the three prophets right there. Go ahead. And be killed. And be killed. Go ahead. And after three days, rise again. And after three days, rise again. So the three shepherds goes into the elders, the chief priests, and scribes, also known as scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees. Them three groups. Go back to Zechariah now. Zechari Zechariah 11, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Three shepherds also... I cut off in one month. Because mm -hmm. when Rome came, Rome destroyed the scribes and the Pharisees and them. Rome killed them dudes, good? And my soul loathed them. And, God, and the Lord said, I couldn't stand those shepherds because they was wicked as hell. 
Go ahead. And their soul also abhorred and me. And those shepherds hated Christ. That's why they killed him. They said, crucify him. Go ahead. Then said I, I will not feed you. The Lord said, I will not feed you. Go ahead. That that dieth, let it die. That that dieth, meaning that what's appointed to die, let him die. Let them die. Go ahead. And that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off. Come on. And let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. What happened in 70 AD? Anybody knows? What? Come on, bro. Can you a double time? We got all day. <laughs> we ain't calling this guy no more. What's the answer? It, it, we had to eat our own kids. Very good. Have a seat. Thank you. We had to. We became cannibals. What the hell? What kind of brothers y'all training up in here? Yeah, Bishop, Yo, what's Bishop. up with Ethiopia, yeah, man? Ethiopia, what's Bishop, up with you, man? Drop, man? That's the lost tribe, man. That's the lost tribe. So we, we became patient. cannibals. You, hey, give me that. <laughs> Thank you. Give me that Deuteronomy 2855. You're Judas, man. You're too fast for me. How you know he ain't Levi? <laughs> 2855, come on. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 55. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children, whom he shall eat, because he have nothing left in the siege and in the straightness wherewith Thine enemy shall distress thee in all thy gates. So 70 AD, they cut off all food and water supplies from us, and we began to resort to cannibalism. Go back to Zechariah 11 and verse 9 one more time. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 9. Then said I, I will not feed you that that dieth, let it die, and that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off, and let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. Read. And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant, which I had made with all the people. Right. Well, give me this. Give me John 19.30. So the Lord said, I'm going to break my covenant that I made with you. Now, now, remember, this is during the time of Christ up until 70 AD. That's what this chapter is talking about. Okay. The book of John, chapter 19 and verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said... It is finished. It is finished. Mm -hmm. That's when he, he ended that covenant. Go ahead. The old covenant is to what it's talking about. Real crowd should have went to Hebrews 8 and 9 first. Give me that one. He was ending the old covenant. That's what he meant. He broke that covenant. The book of Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant. Meaning the old covenant of animal sacrifice. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Uh, he regarded us not as we going into slavery. Mm -hmm. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. Now that part right there is going when Christ returns. Because right now we don't have the laws in our mind. Okay. He's going to put it in our minds though. Was that it? No, sir. Go ahead. And write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they should be to me a people. It's back to Zechariah 11, please. You don't want John? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Read, read John. I'm sorry. John chapter 19, verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Right. When he said it is finished, the old covenant was over. That was finished. Okay. Now, go back to Zechariah 11, 11 now. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 11. And it was broken in that day. Talking about the staffs were broken in that day. Go ahead. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the, the word of the Lord. So the poor of the flock that waited upon me, talking about Christ, knew that it was the word of the Lord. The poor of the flock. Give me the Isaiah 14, 32. We're the poor of the flock. But think about it. During this, the time of 70 AD, when all those atop, what's the word? atrocities and catastrophes were happening, they knew it was the word of the Lord. Why? Because Christ told them, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, know that the desolation thereof is near. We read that earlier tonight. Read. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the, that the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. See that? The poor of his people, meaning poor in spirit. Back to Zechariah 11. Zechariah, verse 11 again. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 11. 
And it was broken in that day. Talking about that covenant, go ahead. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. So when the poor of the flock, those that follow Christ, so all those atrocities, what's the word? Atrocities happened. They said, this is what Christ told us about. And what they do? They fled. They ran like Christ instructed them. Go ahead. And I said unto them, if ye think good, give me my price. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. Here's the precept, Matthew 26, 15. Verse 14 and 15, that's what I want. They weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. Some of you will give up this truth for 30 pieces of silver. Read that. Matthew chapter 26, verse 14. Then one of the 12 called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenant covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. So that's what Zechariah prophesied before it even happened. 30 pieces of silver will give you to betray the son of God. And some of y'all are here. Y'all don't see us as children of God. You'll betray us for less than that, a dollar. We already know it. We, the spirit has already shown us. Go back to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 12. And I said unto them, if ye think good, give me my price. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized out of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Matthew 27, let's read 5 through 10 real quick. Matthew, Matthew 27. chapter 27, verse 5. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed. This is after the devil left uh, Judas. He realized what he done did. He cast down the silver. Go ahead. And went and hanged himself. Went and hanged himself. Go ahead. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury. We can't put this 30 pieces of silver into the treasury in the temple. Go ahead. Because it is the price of blood. It's the price of blood. Whose blood? Christ's blood. Go ahead. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field mm -hmm. to bury strangers in. Wherefore, the field was called the field of blood mm -hmm. unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying... Jeremiah wrote about it, but Jer remember, Jeremiah's records was burnt up. They didn't get everything back. So Zechariah repeated what Jeremiah said. Good. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued whom they of the children of Israel did value and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. Let's go back to Zechariah 11 again. Zechariah verse 13 again. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 13. And the Lord said unto me, cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized out of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Read. Then I cut asunder mine other staff even bands. Even bands. It's Northern Kingdom. That I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Now you might, what brotherhood did they have? Remember when Christ was on the scene, he was starting to bring them back. Give me that real quick. In John, is it four? I want the Samaritan woman. And then I want Acts 15. I didn't write it down. It just popped in my head. Give me that one. What, what, what uh, John 4 about um, our father no give me the one that said why do you talk with me who you don't deal with me what verse yes, is that sir, I got you. John chapter 4 verse 11 the woman saith unto him sir thou hast nothing to draw with and the well is deep from whence thou hast thou that living water art thou greater than our father Jacob verse 9 start at 9 yes sir John chapter 4 verse 9 then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask if drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? So the Samaritans, give me that real quick. Is that Isaiah 7 and 9? I'm not looking at it. Yes, sir. Believe it or not, you got camps that think that this woman was not an Israelite. Hmm. I don't know what the hell's wrong with them. Spirit them blocked them. Read that. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 9. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. The head of Ephraim is Samaria. That's all I want. Go on back. John 4 again. John chapter 4 verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew, ask if drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? 
For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Remember, there was a split in the kingdom. She's telling, she's reminding Christ about the history. We Y'all don't talk to us. Y'all don't deal with us. Go ahead. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. We? The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou the living water? Watch this. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? She said to Christ, are you greater than our father Jacob? So what was she? An Israelite. I don't see how people miss that. Go ahead. Which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Now, for time's sake, let's just jump over to verse uh, 20. Verse 20. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. This is the woman. She said, our fathers worshipped in this mountain, Mount Gerizim. Go ahead. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Because remember, we read it at the beginning of the class. Jeroboam got every the northern kingdom away from Jerusalem. Said, don't go back there. So she's saying, our fathers worshipped in this mountain, meaning the mountain in Samaria, Mount Gerizim. Go ahead. Jesus saith unto her, woman, believe me. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain. In Mount Gerizim, you will neither in this mountain. Nor yet at Jerusalem. Nor in Jerusalem. Worship the Father. Meaning ain't no Israelite going to be worshiping the Father. Read. Ye worship. Ye know not what. You don't know what you're worshiping. Go ahead. We know what we worship. We Jews, we know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. When it says for salvation is of the Jews, it means salvation is coming from Judah. Give me that Psalm 76 and 1. The book of Psalm, chapter 76 and verse 1. In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. In Judah is God known. Now watch, give me that, uh, Genesis 49. Genesis 49 and 10. Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. Mm -hmm. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Meaning the kingship shall not depart from Judah. This is a prophecy. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet. It was already prophesied that Christ would be the lawgiver. Go ahead. Until Shiloh come. Until Christ come. Go ahead. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So this Messiah of Judah would gather the people. Go ahead. Come on. Binding his foe unto the vine mm -hmm. and his ass's coat unto the choice vine. Read. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in blood of grapes. Read. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. So back in Gen, Moses already prophesied the Messiah would come from Judah. Go back to John 4. John. And verse 22. John yeah. 4, verse 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Now jump over to verse 39 for time's sake. Verse 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days. Christ stayed with Ephraim for two days. Now that ain't all Ephraim. Remember the large bulk of them left. But the remnant that was there, Christ stayed there for two days and taught them. Read. And many more believed because of his own word. Read. And said unto the woman, now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ. The Savior of the world. See that? So they said, this is the Christ, the Savior of the world. How are you not going to know that this is Israelites? How are you not going to know that? Okay. Give me Acts 15, 15. And Bishop, yeah. the crazy thing is, there was no Bible at that time. Right. So how would they know that this was the Christ? And why would they be looking for a Christ, a Savior? Because historically, it was told unto them. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, that's proof that these were Israelites. Exactly. There was, there was no Bible for them to go back and read a New Testament. Mm -hmm. Acts 15, 15, and 16, please. Yes, sir. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 15. This is referring to, write this down, referring to Cornelius' conversion. Go ahead. 
And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and will build again the tabernacles of David which has fallen down. The tabernacle of David which has fallen down is referring to the two kingdoms, the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And I will build again the ruins thereof and I will set it up. So the prophet said, the Lord said, I'm going to rebuild the 12 tribes of it. That is God's plan. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. That is his plans. Ask the Christians where the 12 tribes at. Nobody knows. Then what's this talking about? Nobody knows. The hell is this? They'll say, oh, it's talking about Baptists and Pentecostals and Cap. No, it ain't talking about that garbage. Okay. Going back, going back to Zechariah. I don't know if we finished that. We're on verse 15, Bishop. Zechariah 11. We're on verse 15. No. Give me Psalms 50 and 2. About the two staves. Two staves. Write that down. Two staves. Psalms 50 and 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 2. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God have shined. That's why, that's how we know when it talked about the staff called beauty, it was referring to the kingdom of Judah. That's where Jerusalem was, in the land of Judah. Okay? From there, give me uh, Psalms 2 and 3. It is more precious, but for time's sake, I'm cutting everything short. The book of Psalms, chapter 2 and verse 3. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Right, from there, give me 1 Chronicles 7 and 4. Let's go into Northern Kingdom. 1 Chronicles 7 and 4. 1 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 4. And with them by their generations after the house of their fathers were bands of soldiers for war. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Where are we talk, who are we talking about? Mm, go read on, read, read. Six and 30,000 men, for they had many wives and sons. And their brethren among all the families of Issachar were valiant men of might, reckoned in all by their genealogies fourscore and seven thousand. So you see in verse four it says, and with them by their generations after the house of their fathers were bands of soldiers for war. Then it lets you know it's about Issachar. So when the Bible talks about one staff for beauty and one staff called bands, it's talking about the two kingdoms. That's what it's talking about. Let's go on back now. Let's go back to, we're almost, almost done, almost done. Zechariah 11. I got a lot there. Give me Ezekiel 37, 16 for time's sake. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 16. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. So what Zechariah talked about. Uh, Ezekiel talked about the same thing and it used the reference as two sticks, two staffs, talking about the same thing, which goes back to the two kingdoms being split. Read. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim and for all the house of Israel, his companions come up and join them one to another and join them one to another into one stick into one stick go ahead and they shall become one in thine hand he said so don't worry about that split with judah and ephraim and them i'm bringing them back together that's the prophecy that's what we just read about in um acts 15 that's what we just read in john 4 go ahead and when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee saying will thou not show us what thou meanest by these Say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah and make them one stick and they shall be one in mine hand. Mm, he said, I'm going to bring them as one nation once again. Go ahead. And the sticks were on. Thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. So that's letting you know we're supposed to go out with the sign of the 12 tribes. So that they can ask, what does this mean? What does this? So we don't bring out the 12 tribes sign because, oh, I had an epiphany. Let's make this up. Read that verse again and the sticks. And the sticks were on. Thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. It shall be in your hand before their eyes. Go ahead. And say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. Read. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore That's at all. That's what Acts 10 is all about. From there, from there, wait, 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 get in, give me a, a, a Isaiah 11, 11 and 10. 
Isaiah talked about the same thing too. So we went Zechariah, Ezekiel, now Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 10. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Mm -hmm. To it shall the Gentiles seek. Now we want to find out who these Gentiles are that's going to seek to the ensign. The ensign is Christ. The ensign is the word of God, the Bible. Go ahead. And his rest shall be glorious. Watch this. It's going to explain the Gentiles. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again, the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria. Write this down. Assyria is Turkey. Go ahead. And from Egypt. Africa. And from Patros. Africa. And from Cush. Africa. And from Elam. Uh, India. And from Shinar. Iraq. And from Hamath. Syria. And from the islands of the sea. That's Cape Verde, the Hawaiian Isles, so forth and so on. Did y'all write that down? Okay. I wrote it down. That's how I'm going to go. Read it again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria. So Assyria is Turkey today. Turkey, T-U-R-K-E-Y. Go ahead. And from Egypt. Africa. And from Pathros. Africa. And from Cush. Africa. And from Elam. India. Go ahead. And Iran. India. And I put Iran next to India. Go ahead. And from Shinar. That's Iraq. I-R-A-Q. Iraq. Because mm -hmm. you got, if y'all, when y'all go home, look up Afro-Iraqis, look up Afro-Iranians. You, they look just like us, and they're on the bottom of society. Just like the Dalits and the, uh, what's the other group called? Dalits and the Sidis in India. Read. And from Hamath. That's Syria. And from the islands of the sea. That's Cape Verde, Hawaiian Islands, so forth and so on. St. Thomas, so forth and so on. Okay. Now, let's go back to Isaiah 11 now. Read. We're in Isaiah 11. Oh, read tw from 12. I'm yes, sorry. sir. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations. Uh, let's see who they are. And shall assemble the outcast of Israel. These are the outcasts of Israel. That's who these people are. Go ahead. And gather together the dispersed of Judah and from the four corners of the earth. He's bringing the two kingdoms right back. That's what the whole Bible is about. It ain't talking about the Philistines coming in with us, the Edomites or the Moabites. That ain't God's program. Go ahead. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart. Y'all see that? The envy is hatred. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, because Ephraim got some hatred towards us. Go ahead. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. And you really see that in uh, Cali. You really see that in California. It's like, what the hell's wrong with them? Northern kingdom and southern kingdom. They, it's like a hatred out there. Go ahead. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. And Judah shall not vex Ephraim. That only comes through the word of God. That's why it's important for us to teach, teach, and mo-teach. Everybody understand that thing? Yes, Real quick. What time is it? Okay. One more, one, more, one more time. Jeremiah. Did we read Jeremiah 31? No, sir. We never read Jeremiah 31, 31? No, sir. Let's read down from there. All right. I'm going to jump. I'm going. No, you know what? I'm going to skip that. Give me Romans 11. Give me Romans 11. I'm going to skip Jeremiah. Because we've read something similar to that. Romans 11. And we're going to start at verse 26, then we're going to jump up. Watch this. Romans chapter 11 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. And so all Israel shall be saved. This whole chapter is about the saving of the Israelites. Go ahead. As it is written. They shall come out of Zion, the deliverer. The deliverer is Christ. Go ahead. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Christ didn't turn ungodliness from the Philistines and the Edomites and the Moabites. The Bible says in the New Testament, for you hypocrites, he's turning away ungodliness from Jacob. Okay? So now, what does this got to do with today's lesson? It got everything to do with today's lesson. Jump back on up. Jump back up to what verse I want. Let me see. Mm. Bear with me a second. Let's look at verse. Let's read one, then we're going to jump. Romans 11 and 1. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. So the answer is no. The Israelites have not been erased. They're not forgotten. They're not done away with. Go ahead. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Read. 
God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. You want to stress that word foreknew. Foreknew me for when? New when? In the past. Old Testament. Go ahead. What ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. He said, I got an, an allotment of men that's sealed. That's not going to bow to the image of Baal, meaning worship these idols and all that. He said, they're going to repent. It's already allotted for them. Jump down for time's sake. Uh, Jump down to verse mm, 11. Verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Right. Have they stumbled that they should fall? Refer referring to, write this down, referring to on uh, southern kingdom. Excuse me. Southern kingdom. Go ahead. God forbid. But rather... Through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. We already read who those Gentiles are in Isaiah 11. Did we not? Yes, sir. It's the outcasts of Israel. That's what it's talking about. Read. For to provoke them to jealousy. Hey, to provoke them to jealousy. Where did we read that earlier today? Let me see. Who, let me see a hand. We read that at the beginning. Okay, what you got, bro? What you got? Come on, double time. Double time. Mm -mm. Don't call out, buddy. Deuteronomy. Who are you? Brother Michael. Brother Michael. Yes, sir. So where do we read about that? Deuteronomy 32, um, 20. Very good. See, he's, he's, he's studying. That's what it's talking about. Paul is saying the same quote. So go on. Where you at? Romans 11 and mm -hmm. 12. Good. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles. Uh -huh. I mean, everybody got rich. Mm -hmm. How much more their fullness. How much more their fullness. For I speak unto you, in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. So Paul is the apostle of the outcasts of Israel. Go ahead. I magnify mine office. I'm going to magnify my, I'm going to make it clear what I'm talking about. Go ahead. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and my save some of them. He said my purpose, my whole point is to provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. My people, he's talking about, the Israelites. I was, how you read that and get other people? It's about white men coming in and Greeks and, and talking about Philistine. No, it ain't. Go ahead. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. Stop. For if the casting away of them, the them that was cast away was southern kingdom. Those scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, why? They hated Christ. They rejected him. Then it says, be the reconciling of the world. You know what word you want to highlight there? Reconciling. Can we, hey, Canada, look up reconcile. Look that up. Like it says in 1 Corinthians 7 about a husband and wife being what? Reconciled. Reconcile. Let's look at what that word means. Something we be reading by words and it's telling you right there. Come on, Canada, come on. What we got? Okay, read that. Reconcile. Restore friendly relations between. You, to restore friendly relations, like husband and wife. You and your wife separate because y'all got to fight. Y'all supposed to reconcile, which means restore friendly relations between. The Most High got mad at us. He cast us into slavery. Now we're being reconciled to him. That's what Christ was all about. Reconcile, restore friendly relations. When was God having a friendly relation with Esau, Edom? When did he have friendly relations with Philistines or Jebusites or Moabites? It's not in the Bible. Stop listening to dumb Christians. They don't know the Bible. Go on back where you at. Romans chapter 11 verse 15. Mm -hmm. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. The reconciling of the world is northern kingdom now. The casting away of the kingdom of Judah because they was rejecting Christ, killing Christ. Be the reconciling of the world. Bring, I'm bringing the other tribes back now. Go ahead. What shall the receiving of them be? But life from the dead. They're going to have life from the dead. Like we were reading earlier about the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet. Go ahead. For if the first fruit be holy. The first fruit is Christ. Write this down. We're not going to read it. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 20 and 23. The first fruit is Christ. He's holy. Go ahead. The lump is also holy. We are the lump. Go ahead. 
And if the root be holy, the root is Christ. Revelation 22, verse 16. I'm just doing this for time's sake. Go ahead. So are the branches. We are the branches. Go ahead. And if some of the branches be broken off. And if some of the branches be broken off. Go ahead. And thou being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them. Uh oh, hold that. Hold that. We're coming back. Give me Jeremiah 11, 16 real quick. What that talking about? Jeremiah chapter 11 and verse 16. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. See that? The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. Go ahead. With the noise of a great tumult, he have kindled a fire upon it. And the branches of it are broken. And the branches of it were broken. See, that is talking about the nation of Israel. Okay? That's what it's talking about. Let's go on back for time's sake. And what verse did we leave off at? Verse 17. Yes, sir. Jeremiah, excuse me, Romans chapter 11, verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou of be Judah, some of the branches were broken off. Go ahead. And thou, be thou, the thou is northern kingdom, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them. And with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Now you're partakers with Christ. Let me see who's thinking. We read several scriptures that explain this tonight. About the branches being broken off and being grafted back in. Go ahead. Come on. I'm going to see who's thinking. I'm giving you all the answers to what I'm leading up to. Um, Ezekiel. Well, who are you? Brother Aaron. Brother Aaron. Go ahead, Aaron. Ezekiel, um, we're, talk we're talking about the two sticks. Okay, Ezekiel 37. Very good. Yes, sir. And what else? Um, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have it. We read Zechariah chapter what? 11. 11. Talks about the two sticks there, too. Don't y'all, I, I need y'all to remember, because you're on the street teaching, you get dumb Christians that go to Romans 11 and think they know it. They don't know it. Because in order to understand it, you got to go to the Old Testament prophecies. What does it say about the two sticks? You got Zechariah 11 and you got Ezekiel 37. That was wrong with y'all. Let's go on back. Where we at? Verse 18. Uh -huh. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root. Don't boast against Judah. But so the, if you if you boast, you don't bear the root, which is Christ. Go ahead. But the root, thee. Christ is the one holding you up. Go ahead. Thou will say then, the branches were broken off. Yeah, the Lord got rid of Judah because they was killing Christ. They rejected him. That I may be grafted in. That northern kingdom might be grafted in. Go ahead. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. The unbelief was the scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees. And that, that wasn't all the kingdom of Judah. That was a remnant of them. Go ahead. And thou standest by faith. You northern kingdom, y'all stand by faith. Go ahead. Be not high-minded, but fear. Read. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. He didn't spare Judah. He said, take heed, lest he also spare not you, northern kingdom. Go ahead. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell. Severity. Right. Those Jews of the kingdom of Judah that fell, God was severe on them. 70 AD, they got put to death horribly. Go ahead. Severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, mm -hmm. otherwise thou also shall be cut off. So he said, if you don't stay in this truth of Christ, you're going to be cut off once again. Go ahead. And they also. And Judah also. If they abide not still in unbelief. Meaning if they repent. Shall be grafted in. They're going to be grafted in. Go ahead. For God is able to graft them in again. See that word? You want to highlight that word again. Again. Okay, don't, don't run by the words. It's right there. Go ahead. Go ahead. For if thou wert cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature. That's what, here's the pre, give me Isaiah 5 and 4, I think it is. Is that it? Isaiah 5 and 4, about the wild by nature. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 4. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I look that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth Wild grapes. See, wild grapes. Was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. That was talking about Israel. Okay, so when we go back to Romans eleven twenty four, read it again. Romans chapter 11, verse 24. For if thou were cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted in, excuse me, and were grafted contrary to the nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, 
which be the natural branches it's about Judah, mm -hmm. be grafted into their own olive They're tree. They're going to be grafted again into their own olive tree. Read. For I would not break, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. He said, I don't want none of y'all to be ignorant of this mystery. Hold that, give me that's the same thing Colossians 126 says. It's the same exact thing. Colossians, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 26. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations. But now is made manifest to his saints. Read. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Ah, that's the outcast of Israel. Go ahead. Which is Christ in you. Which is Christ. Was that the whole verse? No, sir. Uh -huh. The hope of glory. The hope of glory. Now, I'm, I got a question. We read something earlier what God said. The Lord said that. He would separate, it was a prophecy that he would separate the tribes, but he, I don't want to say too much, but he would bring them back again, bring them back together again. Mm, I'm trying not to word it certain ways so y'all don't get it. But uh, we read it at the beginning of the lesson. Anybody know? It's in Deuteronomy. I gave you a big hint right there. It's in Deuteronomy. We read it today. So you gotta, that's why you must read the Old Testament. Christianity says, get rid of the Old Testament. You cannot. Don't make that mistake, brothers and sisters. Deuteronomy 32. What verse? Let me hear it. Read it, because I'm not looking at it. Deuteronomy chapter 20, 32, verse 26. I said I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Mm -hmm. Where is it not? Go ahead, let me hear it. I went to one about he's going to provoke us and... Yes, sir. 21. Okay. 32 verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. Mm -hmm. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. See, I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. Hold on. Hold on. I thought, help me. I, my glasses. It says provoke them to jealousy. It's somewhere in here. Anybody know? No, I thought it was in the Romans 11. It ain't in Romans 11. Maybe I'm getting old. I'm just forgetting. But I thought there was somewhere in here. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, I'm looking. V verse 11. I got you, Bishop. 11, 14? 11, 11. 11, 11? Yes, sir. Read that. Romans 11, verse 11. Right. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. For to provoke them to jealousy. That's what we just read in Deuteronomy 32. Y'all see that? Yes, sir. That's we je Moses told us that thing. So if you get rid of the Old Testament, I, I, we can't help you. We can't help you guys. I ain't got to read the Old Testament. You simple as hell. Going back to Romans 11, we're almost done. We're almost done. What verse we at now? 25, sir. Go ahead. Romans 11, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part is happened to Israel. Blindness in part is happened to Israel. All Israel ain't blinded. Just a part of them is blinded. Go ahead. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Let's talk about Israel. Go ahead. And so all Israel shall be saved. See, verse 26 is explaining the entire chapter of verse chapter 11. And so all Israel shall be saved. Go ahead. As it is written, they shall come out of Zion, a deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Mm -hmm. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. When I shall take away their sins. Read. As concerning the gospel. As concerning the gospel of Christ. They are enemies for your sakes. Why were they enemies? Because you had Judah, some scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees, remember those three groups, that was killing the followers of Christ. Just like today, that same hatred is there. Go ahead. But as touching the election. But I want you to pay close attention. This is how we deal with our, the churches. But as touching the election. They are beloved for the father's sake. They are beloved for the, because those are Israelites. Although we go to them and they, I don't want to hear that. Jesus is black. Keep no damn commandments. to hell with y'all. They're enemies to the gospel, but they are beloved for the father's sake. Always remember that. So don't turn these people into devout enemies because mm -mm. they could like Paul I always go back to Paul 
He was an enemy, and look what happened. Always keep that in mind. So as we close out with Psalms 50 and 16. The book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 16. But unto the wicked, God saith. The wicked is not talking about amongst our people. The wicked is talking about Esau, the so-called white man. That's Malachi chapter 1, 1 through 4. They are the wicked. Go ahead. What has thou to do to declare my statutes? See, some of y'all listening, some of y'all online, you only believe when you hear the white man say, those are the Israelites, the blacks and Latinos, those are the Israelites. That's when you believe. Let me tell y'all something. If you only believe because your slave master said it, the Lord ain't dealing with you. Because that's white supremacy 101 all over again. Read it again. But unto the wicked God saith, what has thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. The Lord don't want these other nations talk, bringing up his covenant. Talking about his new covenant in Christ. He don't want the, he don't want the coming out of their mouth. But some of you go, yeah, the white man said, see, 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 we, we, we believe now. Well, you only here today, you gone tomorrow. You men and women know who you are. You only came here because the white man said it. You're going to be gone. Go ahead. Seeing thou hatest instruction. The white man hates instruction, in case you didn't know that. He hates God's laws. Go ahead. And cast this. Wait, wait. If he did, give me that Exodus. Uh, is it 22, 16? Slavery. 21, 16. If he didn't hate God's instruction, why is he pushing get rid of the Old Testament? Why is he printing Bibles with no Old Testament laws? There's a reason behind it. Watch that. Exodus chapter 21, verse 16. Is this 22, 16? 21. Go ahead. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Nobody want to hear that. Nobody want to hear God. Let's get rid of that. Okay, go on back now. Verse 7, Psalms 50, 17. Psalms 50 and verse 17. Seeing thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee. Esau, the white man, hates the instructions given by God. And he cast the word of God behind him. Like in their court system. They'll make you swear in the Bible. Then they'll throw the Bible under a table somewhere. Go ahead. When thou sawest a thief. When thou sawest a thief like Columbus, uh, Ponce de Leon, Pizarro, for so forth and so on. Go ahead. Then thou contendest with him. Thou consentest with him. So that was in the 1400s. Then you got the 1800s when you had, what's his name over Belgium? Um, Leopold. King Leopold. Then you had the other Edomites from Britain, uh, 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 Spain, all the Edomite nations. They divided Africa up. Read that again. When thou sawest a thief. When thou sawest a thief. Then thou consentest with him. Go ahead. And has been partaker with adulterers. Yeah, when they was banging and raping the women, they was in agreement with that thing. Go ahead. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. And thy tongue frameth deceit. And they frame lies after lies after lies. Go ahead. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. And, and you know, that, see that part 19? Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth deceit. That's them and making legislation with their laws. Those political groups. That's them right there. Go ahead. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. The 12 tribes of Israel. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. We're the most criminals people on earth. I don't even know if that's the word. We are the criminals of the earth. That's how they portray us. Go ahead. These things hast thou done. And I kept silence. The Lord said, I've seen all this, but I've been silent for a long time. Go ahead. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such and one as thyself. The white man says, surely God is a white man. Let's paint him to look like us, be like us, look like us. Go ahead. But I will reprove God thee. God said, but I'm going to reprove you. I'm going to correct you, Edomites. Go ahead. And set them in order before thine eyes. That's what y'all seeing today. Men and women being set in order before the world. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Never give up. 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 All praises to the Lord. With that, shalom. Bullfight. Hey, um, Bishop, before the class started, the men alerted us to a room on Clubhouse with people saying, they're ha they doing rooms now discussing the problems about us. Really? So me, I listen, yes, I listen to everything. They're not pulling no scriptures. You know what they're going into? 
N1, B1, A1, B1 to say that according to these scientific tests, we can never be the Israelites. They're not going into no prophecy. They're not going into no scriptures. They're bringing books and science to argue you people who don't study that you're not the Israelites. So shame on you if they confound you with those books. And a lot of these people used to fight each other, and now they're all in rooms working with each other. Okay, a lot of the men from that black unconsciousness foolishness is now teamed up with the Christians and the apologists to find a way to come and confound us. So I listened to all the stuff that they were talking about, and they're not pulling not one scripture. And if they do pull a scripture, it's to say that we're breaking it down wrong. Right. That's hey. all they're coming together for. Hey, check it. In order to be, to sh prove who the Israelites is, guess what you need? Who DNA you need? You need you need the DNA of King David. You need the DNA of the Jews of that time. Abraham, do, Isaac, right. Jacob. And do the so-called white man get that? No, he don't. So how the hell he could prove himself being a Jew because they say so? That DNA stuff is garbage. No, listen. No, I could do a DNA test on my son. It only it only, and it could show that he came from me. All right, why? Because you got my DNA. You understand? And not just that, my DNA could only go back but so far. Like two or three generations. Anything further than that is guessing. You understand? Understand that, people. So DNA testing is garbage. We're going to go by what the Bible say. The Bible say Israel went into slavery on ships. That's what we're going by. You have the slave trade, you are an Israelite, man. Right. The hell with the DNA. All praises. All praises. Hey, let me ask you a question. You, what's the scripture about avoiding DNA? I said it like that. Titus. No. Wait, Bishop, before you, how many of you men in black know what the scripture is? Show of hands, put your hands up. Uh, brother back there with the glasses. You, yeah, you, no, right, you stand up, right? Yes, you, what is it? Uh, Second Timothy 6.20. Very good, it's you good. close. Give me that, real quick, Read real it. quick. Is it First Timothy? Yes, First six verse 20. You got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Read that real quick, because they got this thing about E1B1. You got to be E1B1. Listen, that ain't biblical. Yep. Read that. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verse 20. Oh, Timothy, keep that. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called. Why does it say oppositions of science? Because it opposes the word of God. Yeah. The Bible says avoid that stuff. You go into that DNA stuff, you're going to get lost in the source. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> and they're bringing up new doctored videos. Uh, to go against Second Ezra's, where it says that the Most High hell still the waters. There's some people saying that the, they're showing uh, African people walking across waters. It's, it's comical. You just got to laugh. And saying that, that that video is what showed when the Most High hell still the waters. And they went for a year and a half. If the stuff is all being doctored and put together, and Esau is behind everything, but they got black faces talking about it. So that's what you're seeing now. Esau, because in the middle of everything is vocab, no class Malone. Okay, and a lot of the black people that didn't have no way to answer us, they go into that idiot white man to now and try to bring ammunition to go against you. And you know how you deal with them? Dismiss them. Okay? Like I said last night, if you don't have an answer to tell them, tell them your mama. <laughs> Uh, hey, because sometimes you forget. Just tell them your mama. There's nothing for us to discuss. They're not coming with anything logical. They're going to tie you up and get you angry, and you're going to wind up telling them that anyway. Okay? Because they're going to come with confusion. They're frustrated. Hey, and the, and the E1B1 thing is, is, the, is the science that Esau uses to legitimize the fact that who they deem is our Jews or certain tribes in Africa that they deem are, are there's never anybody here, Lemba yes. or Nigeria, wh whoever embraces Judaism mm -hmm. that they've colonized and brainwashed further, they'll say they have the gene, they, they, we, we swab our mouth with two Q-tip and then theirs and that link together, that's us. You know they, what's they, the proof? They are people. Deacon, because they only did the studies on them. 
All the studies that they come up with are on them. The books that they have are on them. Remember when he was watching in Django when Leonardo DiCaprio was talking about the head, the skull shape, and the cranium? They're bringing that stuff up now. And the swab and the saliva and where they found the bones. And they come up with that stuff. And this was never a discussion before. For the men that was in the truth 20, 30 years ago, this was never a discussion. So who's manufacturing this stuff now? They're realizing we cannot mess with these dudes in this Bible. Right. We need to make something up that sounds good. And you simple black people that don't study, you're going to get caught up. Yeah, you remember what Bishop read earlier. Men that didn't have faith. You remember that's what their forefather was destroyed for. Which one are you going to listen to? Men? That's what uh, the deacon just said. Now we start preaching. Everybody coming from everywhere. Then trying to confound the thing that can confound us. No, it's because your guy's doing the great work in these streets. Hey, there's a movie on Hulu that the brothers was watching it, and they got met actors in purple teaching the Bible. Hulu, yes, bring it up. Bring it up. There's a movie, they got actors, and we was trying to figure out which camp is this. And when you look closely, they got actors with purple and gold preaching on the street on Hulu. That was never a discussion before. Okay, so don't think that they don't know that, that, what, that the information we have is changing this earth. Um, hold on, hold on. I'll send it to Yo. Hey, listen, I want to come. Remember Psalms 50 that um, we read early on. Unto the wicked, he said, what I, what I, what, what, you shouldn't be touched reading my Bible. You shouldn't be trying to explain my Bible. So the posture that we all should take with, with heathens, especially Esau, is that the wicked is, you ignore them. Listen, this Bible don't belong to you. You, and nothing you say from this Bible, we respect it. You don't supposed to be reading the Bible. That's why we dismiss um, that dude, Mark Reiser. We dismiss him because this Bible is not his. He have no authority teaching this. Yes, right. You understand what I'm saying? That's why we said we let you men know dismiss that Edomite. You feel what I'm saying? Some of his, some of his, his coonies, you know, which is Negroes, they, we might entertain them. But any these Edomites, we just shutting them down. That's it. Yep. You know, we ain't want to debate you. We don't want to. For you to explain nothing, no. You have no authority teaching the Bible. That's it. You have no authority. The most high God gave us the authority. That's why you got a class like what you got today. And I know you all took notes, right? I know a lot of you enemies, you Christians was online. And you're like, oh, smack. That makes a lot of that sense. That makes a lot of sense. Taking notes. Oh, smack. That's How right. do I come? What scripture can I find to come back that right yeah. there? Romans 11. Yeah. And so yeah. all Israel shall be saved. Men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. in